The man turns to a girl with beautiful pink hair named Rosalind. She obediently lowers her head. She is approached by the ruler of the continent and the judge of the three seas, also a famous invincible legend who wants an answer. The man is the owner of the magic sword Estin. This is the emperor of the state of Etius Kahir. Looking carefully at the girl, the young man asks what she wants in this life, as if he himself doesn't know. The beauty looks intently at the prince. She doesn't know if she has the right to express her true opinion, but she receives a slight nod of her head. The blonde assures that everything is in perfect order. He wants to hear an opinion, which, even if sued, will still be quite important. Not believing her ears, the girl quietly asks if this is true, hoping that at least this time she is not mistaken. The heroine worked in the story as his majesty's secretary, just to survive. Every day the lady was bothered by aristocrats, as well as endless work. Now the danger has passed. The heroine decided to live a quiet life, so she boldly declares that she wants to finish her job as a secretary. Not understanding what just happened, the man gets up from his seat, asking in surprise if it's true. He doesn't like what he hears. The young man became angry, which was clear even from his reaction. He hastily says that such a thing is impossible. Rosalind really doesn't understand what the problem is. She just followed the order and answered the question honestly. Grabbing his interlocutor's chin, the young man raises it a little. The Virgo didn't think about what she should have anyway. Looking with a crazy look, the blonde reminds him of what was said from the very beginning. There is only one way to vacate this position. The girl hastily asks what she needs to do, but in response she receives only a light chuckle. She must die to stop working as a secretary. The next morning began with screams of horror from the maids, who in the morning noticed a woman sitting on the windowsill with the windows open. Hearing voices and sounds, the maiden turns, looking at her acquaintances with a frightened gaze. She doesn't know what to say as her last words. The maids carefully walk behind, taking slow steps. In one voice, the girls ask Miss to go back to her room and calm down. Instead of listening, the lady jumps and quickly flies to the ground. This is just another dream from which you need to try to wake up. The girl lives in Seoul. She worked as the president's secretary for six years in order to help her brother and sister and look after them. Now the brunette realized that she had become free as the wind. All the barriers that had held her back before had no meaning. The youngest graduated, so the lady no longer had the need to live differently from the way she wanted. The woman quit almost immediately to get some rest. That same night, a lady jumped out of a window because of an affair. She became interested in what she could read in her free time. Throughout the book, the heroine sympathized more with the secretary than with his beloved girl, who fell into the trap of love. The tyrant in the book often ordered a job that took several days to be completed in one, because that was his wish. If something did not go as the prince would have liked, he immediately pulled out his sword, as if he was always ready. It turned out that in front of such a formidable and great man, the secretary was like a fly in front of a hurricane. Looking at the next chapter, the beauty screams at the hero for the way he treats a man. He doesn't know how hard it is to be a secretary. Carried away by reading, the girl did not notice how morning came. Half asleep, she calls the director a strange man. When the lady opened her eyes, she did not immediately understand what was happening. It was uncomfortable for her to sleep because of the book next to her, which was very disturbing. Jumping up and sitting on the bed, Rosaline looks at the cover, realizing that in front of her is the same book. This is how the lady ended up in the novel. Opening her eyes, she sees her parents, realizing that she is still in the book, which seemed like a dream that she wanted to get rid of. The virgin indeed moved, but did not know what about her second personality, which remained there. The woman asks her daughter to drink as carefully as possible. The beauty realizes that she cannot leave everything as it is. Still, the situation is better than if the lady found herself in an unfamiliar place that she had not seen. We need to quickly figure out how to get back to another world and a past life. The heroine is completely unaccustomed to what is happening around her. Virgo did whatever she could to return to her world. She tried poking at the hive. There are poisonous berries that were supposed to help, and a lot of other things. Each time, everything went according to a familiar scenario. The girl opened her eyes in her room, realizing that she was completely fine. Even after the last attempt, the doctor was convinced that it was a miracle that Rosaline ate the grass and nothing happened to her. Only after everything that had happened, the girl realized with horror that she could not die before the time that was measured out to Rosaline in the novel. A few days later, the lady came up with a plan of action. She acknowledged what was happening, hoping that it would somehow help. Since the lady cannot return, 
she will live as the daughter of Viscount Barrett. The family has enough money, and the lady has a beautiful appearance, especially since here you can eat as much as you like. In addition to all this, the girl had a lot of outfits, which were replenished with new things almost on a constant basis. There are people around who treat Barrett like a princess from the palace. They took care of the girl, hoping for praise. That is why the lady decided to do this. She was happy to live a carefree life surrounded by her parents and family. Mom asks how the girl slept and notes that the new dress suits her very well. Her husband only nods in agreement. The lady also had a kind elder brother who was ready to protect. The heroine liked that absolutely everything was intended for her, both things and people. The most important thing is that Rosaline is not the main character because her role is not that important. The girl's life promised to pass without worries and hassle, even if she ended up next to the main character. The world seemed perfect. For the blue eye, such conditions were quite suitable, so she did not try to find any more solutions. Days passed at this rate, and then years. Five years have passed since everything happened, which the girl spent with benefit for herself. The heroine was so busy with the sweet life that she completely forgot about one important detail. The servant called Roy because his majesty is looking for a secretary. Looking at the family talking, the lady realizes that they think this idea is strange. From the first second, the girl herself also did not remember the plot. Escaping from the balcony, the beauty followed to her room to open the chest, which had long been sealed. First, I needed to get the key, which was in the nightstand. This was one of the most important things for getting a publishing house. Grabbing the book, the beauty begins to frantically leaf through the pages to understand where the moment with the secretary is. Roy could not approve Cahir's schedule. Because of this, the young man did not keep his promise to Ella. He flew into a rage and destroyed Barrett's entire family. The younger sister Rosalina also could not escape her anger, which made the heroine flinch. The book quickly flies to the floor. Grabbing her neck due to a sharp lack of air, the beauty tries to breathe as deeply as possible in order to calm down. This cannot be allowed. At the same time, work is in full swing in the Imperial Palace in Aetius. The prince wonders if they found him a new secretary, as he asked for it. The guy with dark hair lowers his eyes to the floor, admitting that the position is still open because there are not many candidates. The hero does not want to be buried under the rubble of work, so he wants at least someone suitable to be found for him as quickly as possible. The servant lowers his head and nods vigorously, promising that everything will be done. He will do his best to make it happen. The blonde chuckles as he sits back down on his throne. Efforts are not so important because he needs a good, worthwhile result. If the man doesn't find the person by the next day, he will do stacks of paperwork. This is not the first time there has been a blockage of documentation in the palace. That same night, Viscount Barrett's mansion was the place visited. The servant hears a knock and opens the door asking who is there. There was a man outside the door, apologizing for disturbing me at such a late hour. He is the emperor's chief secretary, and his name is Derek. The hero has arrived to see the Viscount, so after a while they sit in the hall and drink tea in complete silence. Trying to find reasons to start a conversation, the young man asks what brought the head so late at night. The matter was urgent, so there was no time to delay. There is no one more suitable than the Barrett family, which is so far from power and connections. Roy will be appointed secretary to the emperor. This news sounds like a bolt from the blue, shocking the man. The image of the emperor, who was listed as one of the most cruel in recent times, immediately flashes through the brunette's head. Immediately after the crown prince ascended the throne six months ago, he cut off the heads of corrupt and incompetent aristocrats, which led to him being called a tyrant. The emperor showed no mercy to the incompetent, believing that everyone should do their job properly. The viscount does not understand why he should send his golden branch and jasper leaf to be torn to pieces. He did not want to let his dear son go. Trying to justify himself, the young man assures that Roy has no experience, so he will not be able to adequately serve the great Sun Prince. Their family won't be able to help. A man undoubtedly values his child, but this is a good opportunity to introduce his family to everyone, showing what kind of children grow up there. Roy is too soft. He does not have any ingenuity, so it becomes clear that with such data, he will not be able to last even a week. Helping an emperor with such a character is almost like a moth that flies to the fire, gradually being burned by the smoke. The father cannot send his son to the palace. Fighting to the last, he asks if there are many famous and talented workers at the academy. Bowing his head, as if a little sympathetic, Derek again repeats that nothing can be done about it. All that remains is to accept reality. This is the emperor's decree. 
His Majesty does not have much patience, so a decision must be made as quickly as possible. The guy's eyes widen. He sees the gold badge that was on the table. This is the mark of an imperial secretary, which means things are serious. Apparently, the emperor was so confident in his choice that he even sent the badge along with the head of the secretaries directly to his estate. There is no opportunity to refuse. The Viscount asks to call Roy into the room, not even noticing the smile of Derek, who is clearly happy. The tea party continues until the man asks what kind of prince he is. He would like to give parting words to his son before the journey. Kahir is literally perfect. Only capable people remained in his circle who do not know what a mistake is. The hero does not have mercy, which many have seen. If there is an error in the notebook, the guy will not hesitate to take out his sword. Not long ago, there was a loud incident. One of the guards was tired and fell asleep at his post, which led to many problems. Unable to withstand such an attitude towards work in general, the blonde sent the man to the front line so that he would regret it. No longer able to find the strength to listen to something like this, the brunette tries to stop Derek's story. There is no need to worry, because everything will be fine if the Viscount's son does not make mistakes that will later not be forgiven for nothing. The hero is not sure of what was said, because perhaps it is not difficult only for a genius. Roy will try to make it almost impossible. The door finally swings open, causing the secretary to jump with joy. He is already looking forward to his future with days off. Standing at the entrance is none other than Rosalind Barrett, who curtsies. She arrived in place of Roy, who was called. The father steps forward, asking what is going on. In his opinion, there was a stupid mistake because they should have called his son. There was no mistake. The girl smiles to smooth things over a little. She wishes to go in her brother's place to take responsibility. Trying to convince the crowd, the maiden reminds them that they received the same education. The heroine really wants this position. The words spoken almost put the father into a stupor. He doesn't want to believe that such a fragile person as Rosaline wants to become a tyrant's henchman. Since childhood, the girl's eyes have always seen only good things. The man tried, but he couldn't hide the other side of life from her forever. A picture emerges in my head of how the emperor will behave. It was impossible to allow her only daughter to be given away to a man like him. While Derek was thinking about what to do, the Viscount managed to fall to the floor, screaming about how bad he was in order to attract attention. The servants immediately picked up the master, who needed to be taken to the restroom. He couldn't stand all this commotion. As if not noticing everything that is happening, the secretary congratulates Lady Barrett. It is a great honor to serve the emperor. A hand holds out a small notepad. According to the man, this is a short briefing on duties. Smiling, Derek tries to make up for what happened, promising that the day after tomorrow he will send a carriage from the castle for the maiden. Smiling back, the girl nods in agreement. She will be looking forward to a new beginning in her life. The girl did this only for the sake of their family. She had been avoiding reading the original, but now the moment had come. The lady was not sure whether she had acted correctly in the past or whether she had made many mistakes, but it did not matter so much. The story will have to be twisted somehow to stay alive. Rosaline promises that she will live her life happily and live to old age. When the lady opens her eyes, the first thing she notices is not the sky and the sun, but the gathered family. Grabbing his daughter's hand, the father begs to tell him the reason for the decision. Her brother can go to the palace. Even Roy tries to make amends for the guilt he feels. He almost cries and begs not to do what he planned. The girl is only 18 years old. It was at this time that she should make her debut in secular circles. Something happened to her, but maybe she just needs new dresses. The man understands everything perfectly. He can afford this because he recently invested in a gold mine. Virgo tries not to show it. My father had invested in a fake mine, not a real one, and that created another big problem. In the original, the mine Barrett invested in turned out to be just an empty cave, which upset him. He was cheated out of money. That is why Roy could not quit his job after the probationary period and became a secretary. It didn't end well. It was because of his brother's mistake that a series of different events began, which only brought with them more problems. What was about to happen should never be allowed to happen. The girl's decision will remain the same because she decided to enter the palace. It won't last long enough for the family to forget what Rosaline looks like. She shows five fingers, saying that she will be there for exactly five years. The mother, who had been crying just recently, quietly asks why such a specific number was named. The girl, of course, could not say that in the book she would die. Aristocrats usually get married after 20, so the girl lies about getting married at 23. Waving her hands, the girl tells the advantages of being a secretary. 
She is good at doing this kind of thing, so she will go instead of her brother. It seems the family was convinced, so the beauty quietly exhales, feeling the secret relief that she managed to find. There is a discussion going on in the Imperial Palace about a new secretary. He has no connections with the Empress Dowager and is away from politics. The man praises his assistant. He did a great job, understanding that it was his responsibility to look for suitable people. Tying the pendant, the guy is already turning around when Derek offers to serve the royal crown. The answer is only a nod. There's a knock on the door. A new secretary has arrived, who is still called a trainee, since they did not have time to hire him. Raising his finger up, the servant says syllable by syllable that this is the new secretary. He won't accept any other answer. His majesty will not kick out the newcomer. The young man understands perfectly well that if he continues in this spirit, he will reach the point of overwork. The blonde sits on the throne. He nods, asking to invite the secretary to his room as soon as possible. The door swings open. A girl appears in the aisle and greets the emperor, introducing herself. Anger shows on the face almost instantly. It seems to the young man that this is some kind of cruel joke that is worth nothing. Turning to Derek, the emperor asks who it is. The servant has already repeated more than once who exactly has arrived and is not going to do it again. Obviously, the guy doesn't like this arrangement of things. He frowns, trying to think of something to say. Virgo looks up sadly at her interlocutor. She notices mood changes, but doesn't know for sure what exactly is wrong. After a moment of silence, the prince descends the steps and heads towards the arriving lady. It's worth admitting, because the young man is simply impeccable. He is too handsome, and the girl regrets that she laughed when they talked about his beauty in the book. Looking straight into the eyes of his interlocutor, the blonde says that he hates women. This makes the girl perk up. Derek understands that he needs to stand up for both himself and the lady, so he says that this is the first time he has heard about something like this. It seems that the heroine misheard, because as you know, the novel has a rating of 19+. plus. He hates arrogant people, so he asks for an internal investigation. What was said, like a bolt from the blue, was not supported. They may have learned that Barrett was illegally investing in a gold mine. Deciding to ask questions, the lady begs to be told what exactly is wrong so she can fix it. I really want to hear the reason. The girl wants to quickly resolve the entire situation. Whatever it is, Rosaline promises to fix it, because she understands in her head what an important place this is. The girl did not believe the hero's words at all. He talks about how he hates women, but as far as anyone knows, that's not true at all. Looking at the girl, the guy seems to crumple. He examines her facial features and curls, trying to find a worthy reason. The whole problem is that the heroine is more beautiful than the emperor. This cannot be like the people in the palace. Freezing, the heroine lowers her head. She doesn't immediately understand how to react, because as far as she knows, nothing was said about this in the novel. Grunting, the blonde thoughtfully asks how the lady is going to correct such a flaw, because she wants to see it. The wind is blowing in her head, but even so the lady understands that she has no right to give up, so that everything does not go according to plan, but according to the plot. Smiling, the heroine thanks for such a high rating. According to her, there is no comparison with the emperor. The girl diligently showers the man with compliments, talking about his nobility and grace, which are completely irreplaceable. Derek, standing behind, is trying to encourage the future secretary with gestures. There is still quite a bit left to make an effort. Rosaline is also trying to tell herself that she will be able to do what she set out to do. All that remains is to do everything possible. We are talking about great achievements, of which there is a whole list, but the sheet never changes. The heroine cannot compare with the shining sun of the empire, which will always shine for all the people in the area. Asking if the lady really wants to become a secretary, the young man receives a positive answer. She wants to do this for the empire. You will have to make every effort, but Rosaline speaks many languages and, in addition, can perfectly fulfill all requests. The blonde chuckles. He's interested in it being true, so he nods in agreement. The girl tries to put pressure to end the conversation, again repeating that she will do anything. She is ready for it. Addressing the man, the emperor asks Derek to vacate and allocate one room next to his chambers. The blonde gives Rosaline one week to show how useful she can be. Joy knows no bounds and it shows. The lady thanks his majesty for what he did for her. Bowing her head, the girl thinks only about how lucky she is that everything went exactly the way she wanted it. The secretary's joy knew no bounds either, because now he wouldn't have to work all day long. Left alone with the emperor, he asks him about something. Leaning closer, the young man clarifies whether the prince really hates women. He didn't know if it was true, so he decided he needed to find out. 
Without looking up from his papers, the young man nods reservedly. This is true, which makes the servant even more surprised. Everything was better before, but this happened precisely from today. Just because girls are beautiful doesn't mean they are bad. Putting down the sheets of paper that were written, the guy only says that he hates what could cause him a headache for the rest of the day. The only suspicious thing is that Rosaline perfectly matches all the preferences of His Highness, making you wonder if everything is normal. I can't believe that everything came together so well, so the Emperor asks to collect all the information about the Barrett family. Leaving the office, the girl finally exhales. It was as if she was walking on a blade when she tried to remain in this castle in her position. The maid greets the girl. Her name is Rui, and she promises to tell everything around for the convenience of the lady herself. Smiling, the girl greets the maid and asks to take care of her. She is used to good people surrounding her. The virgin promises to show her the palace, but after a while the heroine is already tired. It seems as if the corridors have no end or edge. Lowering her eyes, the lady dreams of changing her shoes to comfortable work shoes and stops Rui, who immediately turns around. Shifting from foot to foot, the girl says that she is not used to the new shoes, so she asks to take a short break. The woman is visibly nervous, asking to do it later, even if it hurts. They must leave the third palace, and the lady immediately realizes that these are the Empress's chambers. They found themselves in an inconspicuous building behind the main hall, which was built especially for a woman. His owner is Kahir's stepmother, Empress Dowager Angela Monica Beloaj. This is the main enemy of the Emperor, which tormented him until his death. The prince was called a tyrant everywhere he went, but compared to Angela, he was a mere trifle and a kind man. The woman literally eats people. Through her efforts, those who were closest to Kahir were executed after slander. I must admit that meeting such a person did not sound like an exorbitant dream. Rui and his secretary set off again. Of course, the adventures weren't over. A little further in the corridor, the lady met the empress, who began to be sarcastic from the threshold. Not wanting to spark a rude conversation or conflict, the lady curtsies to greet the woman. Ignoring Rosaline, Angela turns to Rui. She dared to enter the third palace without permission. The girl begins to tearfully apologize. It's simple, because the maid serves Kahir, so they have fun with her even if it's a common corridor. Leaving the other lady alone, the lady turns her attention to Barrett. This is the first time she has seen someone like this, which means she appeared unnoticed. Trying not to pay attention to the book under her chin, the heroine introduces her first and last name only to smile after that. The woman snorts. She had not heard about this kind or about what exactly the girl's family does, making her insignificant. As is known, the lady's father bears the modest title of Viscount, and the position and wealth of the family are incomparable to that of dukes and counts. Barrett's family has something much more important than all the wealth. They have education and honor, which cannot be changed. Centuries-old devotion to the imperial family also takes its place. The woman knows nothing, but dares to talk down. What happened won't last forever. It's worth at least trying to explain something or even resist. The girl offers her condolences about the tragedy that happened to the queen's older brother. The anger is noticeable because it was Kahir who took his life. Trying to restrain herself, the girl asks what Rosalind's position is. The heroine is His Majesty's new secretary, so she's going to carry out all his orders and everything else. The woman can't stand it. Barrett thinks she hit the jackpot and can now freely trust Kahir, which is not even close to the truth. Staging a concert of pity, the lady whines that the son she raised in love allows his people to treat her like that. The virgin deserves death for her bad manners, because if the emperor finds out what they did to his mother, he will definitely be very upset. Derek rushes at full speed and then suddenly throws the door open. They have problems that urgently need to be solved. The servant will have problems because the man finally found time to rest, but for some reason he was only interrupted. The brunette doesn't seem to listen to the threats. He talks about the new secretary, whom His Highness disliked because of his beauty. The girl encountered the Empress, who finds fault with the people of Kahir over all sorts of little things, and then punishes them for nothing. The man almost bursts into tears, asking for help, because only recently, with such difficulty, he finally found a suitable secretary. An image of a beauty flashes through my head, who seemed to want to carefully hush up the whole situation. However, everything will turn out the other way around, because the lady will be defeated. Most likely, the Empress will put her whole soul into this, so all that remains is to change everything so as not to see this. There is a slight silence in the corridor. It seems that this is the calm before the storm, which is about to begin its revolution. Turning to the woman, the lady asks if she and the prince really have such a relationship. I can't believe this is true. 
The virgin would never dare to offend the empress, but she asks to take back the words about love for his highness. The conversation went in the wrong direction, which is why most likely the man would not care how the secretary talks to the empress, which means there is no reason to change anything. The redhead can't stand it. She doesn't realize how exactly the girl dared to say something like that right to her face, so she swings her arms sharply. The girl doesn't leave. Realizing what exactly happened, the beauty only tries to close her eyes so as not to see everything that is happening around. Just at this time, the emperor appeared. He stops his stepmother by grabbing her wrist so that no harm can be done. Looking at the girl, the guy, smiling, confirms the beauty's words. Nobody said anything bad or untrue. Instead of immediately starting to swear, the girl forces the men to let go of her hand, which was slowly beginning to tingle. The hero takes Rosaline's side because she speaks the truth to her face. It is obvious that the lady comes from a family with dignified secretaries. Not wanting to listen to any excuses, the young man asks the girl to repeat again everything that she has already said. There is no love or anything like that between these people, just a purely business relationship. Even if the lady had addressed the empress with disdain, it would not have upset anyone. Silence falls. The girl literally begins to rush about because on her first day she embarrassed herself. Tomorrow she will deservedly be thrown out of the castle. The woman steps back, realizing that she should say something, but is interrupted by the prince who started it all. The young man's honest secretary did not say anything bad that could harm the situation. For the commotion, the guy promises to punish the lady. The madman smiles because of the girl, who seemed to have just arrived at the castle. Covering herself with a fan, the maiden steps back. Perhaps Rosaline will be needed more alive than when something is done to her. It can be useful. Both groups left the corridor. Stopping on the street, the man turns to the lady and asks why she needs this position. Thinking for just a second, the girl says that she wants to enjoy privileges and glory while serving the son of the empire. Not believing the words spoken at all, the young man, in a more menacing tone, again asks why the lady needed the position of secretary. The girl even managed to resist Angela, which is getting weird. She may be a specially sent person. Gathering her thoughts and willpower, the maiden quietly says that she came in place of her brother. This was the best decision. This seems strange because the truth was said straight to your face. Even the servants are a little surprised. This will be a problem for the internship, but the worries dissipate as soon as the prince bursts into laughter. There was nothing funny, so the guy falls silent and throws the crown towards the secretary. He asks why the maiden decided to replace her brother. According to the stories, Roy is in poor health, so the beauty arrived in his place, caring about what exactly he was feeling. Patience is almost over. If the girl lies at least one more time, the emperor will not give even a penny for her life. The girl does not know what to do and how exactly to part with the truth. There are more servants behind, who confuse the heroine a little. Noticing the strange reaction, the king orders Derek and Rui to take ten steps back. The lady does not want to voice the reason near the servants, who could then strongly condemn her for it. This is understandable, because the secretary's behavior spoke for itself. Derek's only concern was since when did Kahir care? Rui pulled the man aside, leaving the couple completely alone to discuss what had previously been almost forbidden. Virgo thanks for the concern, but comes closer to say what she is going to say. She looks straight into the blonde's eyes. In fact, the girl's brother is a little stupid, so she decided to go instead, so as not to upset the ruler. Not hearing what exactly is being said, Derek, of course, falls into a stupor. He knows he will follow such gestures. The maiden touched the emperor, so most likely now she will regret it when she sees the sword in her face. The blonde is silent, and then, instead of reacting differently, he bursts out laughing again. He's almost clutching his stomach. The girl is well aware that she came here to go to the end, so there will be nothing left but to lie to the end, with honest eyes. The young man stops to catch his breath. The new secretary seems like a funny person to him. There is something wrong with the emperor because he reacts in this way, which makes the beauty almost cry. But soon she hears his voice. The woman did one of the most noble deeds for her family because she cares about them. Bowing her head, the lady thanks for the kindness and mercy on the part of the king, who has never seen this. Asking Rosalind's name, the blonde smiles one last time, saying that she has been his secretary since that day. You will have to try. The girl, not intending to hesitate, extends her hand and shakes it back. She will be happy to try her best. Scratching her neck in awkwardness, the lady nevertheless decides to ask how exactly the young man realized that she was lying to him. Just opening his mouth to say something, the emperor notices the bird, so he abruptly pushes the princess aside. The heroine's cheeks turn red. 
She, trying to object, realizes that they are too close, but she doesn't know what to say. The servants are more surprised than ever. Both want to unanimously ask what exactly is happening here. The guy points to the bird. A woman almost embarrassed herself on her first day, which didn't go according to plan. As it turned out, the whole reason lay on the surface itself. When a lady lies, she starts biting her lips. The hand automatically reaches to the mouth in order to quickly cover it and not appear to those who are a little frightened by such a reaction. From now on, the lady promises to be careful. In order for the empress to calm down, the maiden is obliged to write down all the achievements during the war. Time is given until the next day. This is almost impossible, which is a little scary. It will be much later for the woman than some letter of apology. Turning around to leave the garden, the young man only says that he expects good results. Rui looks after the couple. She was very worried, but it seemed that some spark had jumped between them. This seems to be true because the spark begins to ignite, even if it takes a long time and is slow. Every day started the same. To begin with, the new secretary was introduced to the inhabitants of the castle, and then to everyone else. Rui wonders what happened. It seemed to her that a spark flared up, and then very quickly disappeared somewhere, leaving no trace behind. Derek, lying across from the brunette, carefully tucks her hair, joking that she ran to them. The lady just feels sorry for Rosaline, who spent five years not dating anyone outside of work. Thanks to her hard work, Derek now has time for his personal life. The girl was called by different names. Some considered her a draft horse, a soulless puppet, or even the emperor's shadow. Tears begin to flow from the eyes. The lady has lived her whole life alone and will die completely alone no matter what. Finishing the next report, the heroine puts the piece of paper aside. She couldn't help but be proud of her work. Looking out the window, outside which it has already become dark, the beauty sighs heavily. It got dark again outside the window earlier than before, but she finished too late. There was absolutely no strength left, which forced the beauty to sit down on the table. She just wants to sleep and forget. The girl has been working as His Majesty's secretary for five years at her own request. She managed to change the original story. Roy married and became a happy father, who was not at all affected by the problem discussed in the book. The fraud case related to the gold mine was quickly hushed up thanks to connections, so the heroine's parents also live in peace. For some reason, the lady hoped for a good outcome for herself. She was still alive, which meant it was worth going home. The only thing that bothered the girl was that the main character had still not appeared in this novel. Opening the notebook, the lady is going to write down everything that has changed. The main character is still not there. The reason is that there have been no banquets for a long time. The author compared the main character of his novel, Ella Paulos, with a beautiful lily which had no equal. In the original story, Ella and Kahir met at his birthday party completely by accident. It was love at first sight, so after that the whole story just began. They couldn't fall in love if they hadn't even met yet. Anger is out of control. Virgo does not know whether there is any point in trying to push them together, but she understands that perhaps the lady does not exist in this world at all. Running her finger along the lion's face, the girl recoils. She almost had a fit of fear because of what appeared. The heroine realizes that now this responsible role is hers. She simply must bring Ella and Kahir together. Before knocking on the prince's door, the lady wonders when she should start looking for the heroine. His highness does not like receptions, so he will try to make excuses. Opening the door, the lady steps inside, greeting the prince good morning and also addressing the maids. In fact, it is not good. The man, just like his subjects, faces a difficult week. While writing something down, the heroine asks if the blonde wants to swim in the hot springs after lunch. The lady thought of everything in advance. You need to come up with your ideas when Kahir is in a good mood. Throwing aside the sheets of paper, the young man sighs. No matter how many comments he makes, aristocrats still bring all kinds of garbage. Not everything is so bad, but the guy's patience also has an end, which seems to be very close. The maids speak quietly among themselves, confirming how good the couple looks. The maiden tries to offer a crown, which they refuse to wear, and keeps up with the prince, who is trying to escape. Looking at the cute, big eyes, like those of a fawn, the young man gives up. He cannot resist anything that will benefit him. Bending over, the guy waits for the legal attribute to be removed from his head. Rosaline doesn't have to wait long. The couple is too cute. They seem to be discussing work issues, but at the same time they act like they love each other. Aristocrats line up just to talk to the ladies. She simply gives them advice because some are afraid to approach the prince. Before visiting the emperor, it is best to forget about how things are happening and talk to someone who knows the situation. 
Straightening the girl's hair, the young man smiles. Barrett always lives up to his high expectations without demanding anything in return. The beauty is very worried that the guy is called a tyrant, and that is why many aristocrats behave this way. The man just has a hot temper that gets in the way of everything. This does not make a person a tyrant. An incorrect assessment of the state of affairs in the country interferes with its management, so the lady tries to fix everything. The conversation quickly ends as the couple heads with the others to the hall to meet with the aristocrats. From the very beginning, things didn't go according to plan. The man asks for mercy because he committed a mortal sin, without causing any emotion on the young master's face. The aristocrat was blinded by money, so he secretly passed information to the enemy country. Rosaline almost screams because she asked the young man to confess to receiving the money, to pay ten times the amount received, and to give up half of his lands. The guy is not going to hesitate. He intends to kill him right now, but in return, the Count finally remembers everything and asks him not to do anything. Secretary Barrett said that this would save lives, but His Majesty does not listen, so the girl tries to say something. The girl takes up her task again, so the blonde has no choice but to listen to her. The Marquis deserves punishment for his actions, but death is too easy. Blood can stain the marble, but this cannot be allowed. The proposal is to deprive the young man of his position, confiscate his property, and transfer the lands to the Empire. The title will have to be taken away, too. There is nothing more miserable than an aristocrat without any money or power. The man, hearing this, rushes forward, begging him not to do this. He cannot accept his future fate. Without listening to the crying and screams, the guy orders the aristocrat to be taken away. He doesn't want to see such a picture. The rest of the aristocrats at the table are in complete silence. I wouldn't want to be in someone else's place. Nothing new, so, pretending that everything is fine, the blonde sits on the throne. The meeting should continue exactly as usual. Remaining in the throne room with the emperor, the maiden works on papers, but is interrupted, asking if she can bring them later. The girl still insists, because she cannot concentrate on work when they are looking at her intently. The more the young man looks at Rosaline, the more he is amazed at how such a kind soul finds good excuses every time. Looking at the lady gets boring, so the blonde calls out to the servant to start another conversation. Leaning on his hand out of boredom, the young man asks whether he should start a war at least once, because he's just bored. This, of course, does not suit the main character. She doesn't understand why such an offer suddenly came. In the last five years, His Majesty has participated in three wars. The servants are still dealing with the consequences, so no one should be bored. Without changing his views, the hero only notices the fact that he is not bored with making fun of the secretary. Smiling, the blonde nods. They will finish, and then they can go their separate ways. Papers are still quite important. Blue Eyes nods in agreement. The mission was successfully completed, so now the neighboring countries are in perfect order. The girl doesn't understand why the prince has been acting so strange lately. He always teases the beauty. The man himself does not notice how much further he plunges into the abyss of his thoughts. He wonders how Rosaline is doing. The girl would like to know more about what is happening, but every step makes the story more and more confusing. Lately, the emperor has been making everyone fall for his beauty while acting strangely. I remember that the novel has a high rating. Only one thought comes to mind. For the last five years, the emperor had no one, and the maiden somehow forgot about it. He has needs. In the original, the man dated the lady occasionally, but that ended after Ella. Virgo decides to quickly arrange a reception so that the couple can meet. The emperor, coming up from behind, asks what the lady is discussing with herself, to which she deftly changes the subject. He asks for something to drink. For some reason, the sight of the young man made the beauty blush. She turns away, not understanding why. The lady announces that there will be a celebration of the Empress's birthday next month. They avoided this for five years, but not this time. The blonde frowns. In the morning, they persecuted a man close to Azella, but he no longer even remembers who it was. The man is reminded that this was the Marquis of Jalance, who had connections with enemies from another country. The guy hasn't changed at all. As usual, he quickly threw out of his head information that was completely unnecessary to him. If this is the Empress's man, the young man tries to catch and arrest him again. It will not work. The incident was beneficial because it made the woman nervous. This time we need a banquet to improve our reputation. The blonde agrees that they need a banquet. Looking at the lady, the hero promises that she can do anything. Starting to write down the necessary preparations in a notebook at the speed of light, the lady promises that she will prepare everything. Another day has come to an end. The trio gathered in the office, working overtime. Something had to be done about this. 
Finally, the Emperor released everyone. Derek ran away first, probably because he had a date with Rui. Just about to leave the room, the young man asks why the secretary doesn't leave. I would like to get my papers in order. While shuffling the sheets, the girl accidentally cut herself. She must have been too tired lately, considering that she had to work a lot because of the reception. Turning to His Majesty, the lady asks if there is anything urgent. If necessary, she will do everything. Instead of saying anything, the young man silently approaches and takes the girl's hand, looking at her finger. The guy promises to kill the one who supplies the paper, which causes a reaction from Rosalyn, who is already unaccustomed to this. The poor supplier did not please the man, who, as usual, lost his temper. There's definitely something wrong with him lately. Looking at the girl's hands, the question itself comes out. Her hands are too small, with which she carries stacks of paper every day. The girl does not try to answer anything in response, only looking around, as if hoping that they will leave her behind quickly. Jumping back, the blonde coughs awkwardly. He held the secretary's hand for too long, which seems strange. A delegation from Ginsburg will arrive tomorrow. The lady promises that even if she finishes late, she will still prepare everything. The man freezes, as if he had heard the biggest lie of his life. He steps back. The hero did not mean this at all, so now he understands that he made a big mistake. He persistently asks the lady to go to bed. The girl falls on the bed, wondering what she missed. The guy got suspiciously very angry for no reason. Since reality diverges from the plot, it is difficult for the beauty to predict the future. She thought she knew Kahir very well. Now the heroine is no longer so sure of what she thought. The emperor changes a lot. A little earlier, an incident occurred in the corridor that only confirmed the guesses. The lady met the prince in the corridor wearing only pajamas. The young man knew that the secretary would not go to rest, so he literally began to push the lady towards her bedroom. Opening the door to the room, the blonde pushes his friend inside. She needs a good night's sleep. Selecting sheets of assignments, the young man promises that he will wake up Rosaline so that there is no need to jump up in the morning. The order to sleep did not work, because now Barrett sits on her bed, not understanding what is wrong with the man. Recently, a lot of things have indeed changed, but the heroine could not answer the question of what exactly it was. The lady was very tired. It was no longer possible to deny this, but sleep still did not come. The whole night passed, and the heroine still could not sleep. That was what showed her that it was all over now. Rui asks Rosalind to leave as soon as she gets ready. Kahir nevertheless came in person to raise his friend, so now they are sitting in the main room at work. The virgin could not even think that yesterday's words were not an empty phrase for the prince, because in the end he fulfilled everything. The delegation, which is already about to leave, says goodbye culturally. There was enough work for this day, so they will be escorted. It's finally over. Rosaline exhales and leans against the door on the other side. It seems that the lady did not see her reflection in the mirror, but Kahir noticed it. The lady looks like a ghost because of the preparations for the banquet, and the young man does not even know that she did not sleep last night. Turning to Derek, His Majesty asks why he blames everything on the secretary, although this is not at all the case. All afternoon meetings will be canceled, and Barrett will go to rest. She looks more tired than she seems. The girl is about to follow the prince, but he quickly stops. This time he leaves all alone. The couple remaining in the office stands looking at each other in surprise. This is the first time such incidents have happened. The emperor has been irritated by something other than Rosaline lately. Perhaps he was just tired from preparing for the banquet. The brunette is not going to spoil the secretary's performance, although, of course, he believes that the problem lies in something else. Having gone to her room, the lady first of all applies makeup. She tries to hide all traces of the night. Perhaps after such a transformation, the guy will say something nice, or that the lady looks pretty good. The day arrived when the banquet and birthday of the Empress Dowager was planned. The man begins preparation from the very beginning. Sitting on the sofa, he goes through outfits that might fit perfectly. Entering the office, the blue-eyed girl does not immediately understand everything. The situation is, to put it mildly, not simple. His Majesty examines the dresses without saying what exactly he is doing. There is absolutely no time for this. Without paying any attention to the words, the young man asks Rosaline to stand up straight. They can't try on all the clothes, so this is the only option left. Virgo obediently remains in place. Even the maids around seem to like the dress they chose. Asking Rui what's going on, the lady finally gets her answer. A selection of dresses is being made for the secretary. Everything seems obvious. The man didn't want to offend anyone, but going to an event in a dress like that doesn't seem like the best idea. 
The heroine's attire seems quite comfortable to her. She doesn't see anything wrong, so she frowns. Today the lady will dance with the prince. According to tradition, everyone must dance with their partner, and his partner will be Rosaline. This doesn't suit the heroine. This time Ella should appear, and something like this could interfere with everything. The girl doesn't know what to do, because the main character's jealousy can become a fatal mistake. If a lady dances with the son of the empire, she may fall into a stupor, but this will not happen. The young man doesn't even know what he's talking about. According to the laws, everything must happen, and the hero will dance with Paulos. Throwing the dress forward, the ruler asks to try it on. If Rosaline is in this, the hero won't even be upset. The lady still doesn't have time for all this. A lot of work has accumulated, so nothing can be neglected. Taking on an angry tone, the emperor orders everyone to do as he says. We must not forget our place and privileges. Taking off his shirt, the hero asks Barrett to leave the room. It becomes clear why he asks this. There is not enough strength to move. Blue Eyes turns scarlet, but the joke about her looking at something like that brings her consciousness back. Evening came quite quickly. The banquet is truly luxurious, only because the right people put enough effort into how everything should be. Although banquets had never been held before, the result was simply wonderful. A lot of work has been done on this. The food was brought from abroad, and the glasses were made by the best craftsmen, which, of course, made us happy. Despite all the wonderful things that had been brought to the palace, the atmosphere did not seem the best to be there. The empress sits on her throne, carefully sipping a drink from a glass, while the sun looks in a completely different direction. Turning away even further, the guy calls Derek to him, persistently asking where Rosalina is. Asking his majesty who he is looking for, the lady reminds him that the event was created for her. Sighing indifferently, the young man asks everyone to enjoy themselves, while at the same time wishing them a happy birthday. The same strange, tense atmosphere remains in the hall, which does not change at all. This is why the emperor does not like banquets. I already want to leave, at least for the duration of the dance, but even the secretary has disappeared somewhere. The girl is very late. Surely the prince has been searching for Rosalind for a long time, but she is afraid to admit it. The idea of Kahir's first reaction doesn't seem all that cheerful. We need to go even faster. Entering the hall, the lady immediately notices blonde hair and light green eyes, which make it clear who is in the distance. A cute little nose and a thin waist, an image that resembles a red deer. Of course, this is Ella from the novel. The main character finally appeared, which made the beauty quickly get into a good mood. The couple makes eye contact. For some reason, instead of a smile, the heroine receives an angry look in her direction, as if she had done something. The girl can't believe that they just looked at her angrily. This doesn't seem like how things should be. It's not that important, because today the king and Ella will finally meet. The moment will be as it should be. Calling the servant for the fourth time, the young man again asks where Rosaline, whom he has not seen for a long time, has suddenly gone to. Interrupting the conversation, the lady on the side reminds you that the dance music will start soon, which means it's time to dance. The man's partner did not show up. There is no law that prohibits something, but this does not change anything. A girl follows into the distance of the hall, attracting the attention of everyone around, which is undoubtedly pleasant. Smiling, the Empress says that she wishes to introduce to His Highness an interesting lady who can serve as the best company. Ella Paulos walks forward, bowing and curtsying. She is going to greet those nearby. Calling the young man the son of the empire, the blonde introduces her name. She is from the family of Count Paulos, who is her father. The girl suits his majesty, although the girl is not from a wealthy family. This seems like an ideal choice. The secretary standing near the exit smiles. The couple finally met, so now everything is exactly as it should have been from the very beginning. The couple looks into each other's eyes. A kind smile appears on Ella's face, which can attract the attention of anyone. Now that the main characters had met, Barrett's work here was over. She can choose what she wants to do. For some reason, a strange feeling settles in my chest. Perhaps the lady is simply tired of preparing the banquet, or perhaps it is something else. Derek, who seemed to appear out of nowhere, runs to meet the secretary. The emperor has been looking for a girl for a long time. She's his dance partner, so it's important. This does not pose any threat because the prince has just found a partner. The brunette doesn't understand what we're talking about. This is important because otherwise his majesty will simply lose his temper. Looking at what is happening next to the throne, the lady asks Derek to make sure that his highness will no longer look for a lady like her. The couple still looks into each other's eyes, as if frozen in time. A vacuum formed around them. This cannot be true. 
or at least the secretary does not want to believe it. He doesn't admit anything like that, even if you look at it from that angle. The first dance has begun. Derek was going to dance it with Rui, so the lady quickly lets him go. The man runs away, knowing how important the first dance is for girls. It was Rosaline's first banquet, but there was no point in dressing up. Now that the main character has appeared, the lady will announce her decision to stop working. The long-awaited life that the woman has been putting off for so long will begin. There was no longer any point in thinking about what would happen in the future. This seems like a positive note, but for some reason there is only one emptiness in the heroine's chest, as if someone has taken away something important. It doesn't usually happen this hard. The girl feels lonely for no reason, which makes her doubt. His thoughts are interrupted by His Majesty, who, appearing out of nowhere, presses the maiden against the wall, almost screaming. The right music will start soon, so you better take responsibility, otherwise Derek will regret it. Extending his hand, the hero offers to dance quickly. It is strange that Kahir is not next to Ella now. The face turns a little red. Despite common sense, the lady only thinks about what is happening here and now. People around turn around only to look at the couple, who begins to dance like birds. The young man is sure that he wants to dance, so all he has to do is enjoy the moment without thinking about everything around him. Rui and Derek don't believe this has finally happened. The couple looks quite harmonious, which makes you wonder if they need anyone else. Looking across the hall, the Empress Dowager grits her teeth angrily. The prince's partner was Rosaline. His Majesty is a little shy. Explaining that things will get better over time, the heroine tries to convince Ella not to give up. The blonde smiles to hide her mood, which has deteriorated. She's worried, but everything is fine. A person like the sensitive Lady Ella would definitely suit Kahir. You just need to find the right moment. Turning away, the girl clutches the hem of her dress. What happened is impossible, because they were destined to fall in love at first sight. Instead of what was destined to happen, His Highness dances with Rosaline. Turning around, the maiden notices that the prince dances well. There would be nothing he did worse than necessary. It's different from what I've seen before, but a genius doesn't need training. It's enough to see it once. The girl's reaction is a little rude, but still does not interfere with the true intentions that move forward. Laughing nervously, the secretary tries to convince the prince that this is not so, so as not to seem rude. Kahir seems to be in a good mood. This doesn't happen every day, so the lady was lucky. The empress glares at the lady again. For the last five years, she has been ruining all the plans she can come up with. No one knows what will happen next, but Azella has a new plan. All she has to do is make Ella Paulos the new empress. After that, no one can stop what happens next. She will control everything around her. Looking around, the girl says that she is a little upset. This is her first dance at the first banquet, but this is not the case for the young man. Freezing, the blonde only easily answers that this is the first time even for him. This is not true so the truth must be told. The girl followed the emperor for the last five years, and to banquets too, and saw all the ladies with whom Kahir danced. Rosaline forgot one very important thing. The guy asked the lady to dance first, so this is the first real dance at the banquet. It was nice to dance. Now that it's all over, the young man has pleased the empress, so he's getting ready to leave. Virgo needs to look after the banquet. When it is time for fireworks, the beauty will send someone to fetch the emperor to his chambers. If the girl stays, then the prince will do the same. He must make sure that she does not make a single mistake. The conversation ended quite quickly, but the heroine can't shake the feeling that someone is drilling a hole in her. It turned out to be Ella. The blonde quietly approached from behind, looking menacingly at the girl who did not understand what had happened. If the main character has arrived, then this is a sign to stay away. Going out into the garden, the lady sits down on a bench. She got tired pretty quickly because of her work and everything that was piled on her. I still had that strange look in my head. Ella seemed to be hinting that the lady had done something wrong. The heroine worked day and night for them to meet, but in the end, everything turned out just like that. Thoughts are interrupted by someone's presence. Turning sharply, the beauty notices Paulos. The girl is nearby, even after Rosaline carefully avoided her. Getting up from her seat, the woman heads out. Surely the blonde came here to relax alone. Almost as they are leaving the garden, the ladies are stopped. Ella grabs Barrett's hand, showing her bad manners. The girl has nothing to say. Even after asking, she shakes her head, looking depressed. There is no need to pretend, because the heroine is the person who knows absolutely everything. Blue Eyes has been reborn. The thought of how exactly the lady could find out doesn't come to mind. There is nothing surprising here. The blonde is exactly the same, but a little different, not that different. 
The couple needs to talk. Too much has happened lately. Not knowing what her interlocutor is up to, she begins to shout that the place of the Empress belongs to her. Minor characters have no right to go anywhere. There was a misunderstanding. Virgo is a fan of the couple Kahir and Ella, so on the day of the banquet, something did not go according to plan. This is not just an accident. The couple was glued to each other from the first dance, which made the blonde sad. You don't want to die because the main character is jealous, so it's worth finding a time and place to talk. His Majesty must drink tea in a looklet, and since tomorrow is Tuesday, it must be mint tea. Tomorrow the girl promises to attend the tea party. History will return to normal. Blue Eyes doesn't even have time to object. She blinks her eyes in surprise, not quite understanding. The heroine leaves the palace, leaving her friend in the dark. She still has a lot to learn, returning history to full circle so that everything finally turns out the way it should. Trying to forget about Ella, the maiden makes her way into the crowd, looking at the beautiful fireworks that appeared in the air. Multicolored fireworks help to take your mind off things a little. Tomorrow really doesn't promise to be a good day. The imperial family stands on the balcony. The empress is having a nice conversation with the heroine about something, while Kahir is looking into the distance. Palos in the book was a kind and compassionate person who cared about others even to her own detriment. After meeting Kahir, she became stronger, turning into a strong girl, ready to give her life for her love. This is the person that the young man so badly needed, a person with a beautiful soul, but the new Ella is very different. The blonde lost her temper over a small misunderstanding, revealing her evil aura that was thickening. This is not the maiden Rosaline knows. Be that as it may, it would be bad if Paulos hated someone he knew. The next day, everything started exactly the same as usual. The hero gathers to greet the new day. The secretary is quite tired, but she cannot mention the idea of resting with Kahir. He works day and night. Interrupting the conversation between the girls, the man calls Rosaline to him, who, of course, quickly rushes to the rescue. From now on, banquets will be prohibited. The emperor did not quite like what happened. The guy doesn't like it when the lady leaves him alone, because it's inconvenient. The virgin worked hard to introduce him to her destiny, but as soon as she stepped away for just a minute, everything went completely wrong. In addition to all this, Kahir continued to look for the secretary, but she was nowhere to be found, as if she had disappeared on purpose. The man was polite to the empress, so his reputation improved. Banquets will be prohibited for some time. The door slams shut. The young man is too hot-tempered, and this is a shame to death, which means he needs to end everything. It's very beautiful outside. Finally, getting out into the garden, when it is not night outside, the lady notices everything that is happening. Since the very morning, the beauty was spinning around at the noble meeting, so that she could not even look at the sky. Approaching his majesty, the maiden assumes that he was tired from the meeting. This needs to be corrected immediately. Peppermint tea will be what will save you from fatigue and irritation. It always helps. During a break, it is best to rest, but because of everything that is happening, the young man cannot even do anything. Kahir is very angry because of how poorly the aristocrats do their job, who seem to know nothing. The young man has good looks, wealth, and intelligence. Rosaline can expect him to have a good character as well. Behind you, you can hear the voice of a security guard stopping someone. Virgo recognizes Ella immediately. The colors thicken, so the emperor menacingly asks what happened there. The girl immediately jumps up from her seat, intending to go check what happened there. Do not be distracted so that the tea does not have time to cool down. Ella wasn't lying when she promised that she was going to come to the tea party without any invitation. Noticing the girl, the blonde immediately begins to wave her hand. She says she has to meet the secretary. Clenching her palms, the girl almost bursts into tears, looking straight into the face of her interlocutor. They agreed to meet. Apparently, Barrett had completely forgotten what she had prescribed. Trying to contain her emotions, the girl promises that she will call His Highness now, because she really forgot. Blue Eyes does not immediately understand what is wrong, because the blonde sharply bows her head, greeting the son of the Empire. Turning her head, the lady notices the prince. She did not immediately understand what exactly was wrong and who had arrived. Asking who it is, the young man is interrupted because Ella is in charge of Rosaline. The Empress Dowager introduced them. She is Barrett's friend. It's clear from the girl's face that this may not be true. The girl is about to explain everything, but she is stopped. Obviously, the king wants to sort out the whole situation himself. It seems that what happened was still fate. The couple looks at each other, even if there is no smile on Kahir's face. I don't want to admit it, but the way Ella looks at the emperor shows her love. The man doesn't feel hostility either. No matter how you look at it, the heroine becomes superfluous. 
She is about to leave, but is stopped by someone grabbing her arm. First, we need to go back to the tea party, and Miss Paulos can join the event in the loquette. His Majesty doesn't seem to understand what's going to happen or how exactly, judging by the way he's acting. The girl thanks for the invitation, even if it is clear that the prince does not like that he was interrupted. There is no way that Rosaline is friends with a girl from the Empress faction. He doesn't listen to chatter from the sidelines. For some reason, it's alarming that the secretary did not deny that she was her friend. There is a more complex meaning at play here. The man thought he knew everything about the woman, but the realization that something was missing makes him feel pain. His Majesty is not feeling bad, he is trying to hide it, because he is simply happy to drink tea with a friend, an acquaintance. Unease hangs in the air. With all his appearance, the guy asks to get rid of the one who arrived. The arrival was the same as the secretary, but thanks to the support of the Empress, Ella did not encounter some of the problems. Rosaline herself doesn't notice that she's holding her head. The young man calls out to the girl to ask about her well-being. Getting up from his seat, the blonde puts his palm to his forehead, trying to determine his body temperature. She's clearly not feeling well. My head hurts a little, but the problem is much more serious. The maiden has turned pale, so now it will be more important to rest. His majesty will not be left alone with Ella. The secretary must always be near the emperor, so the same rule applies both ways. The man asks Miss to forgive for what happened, because they didn't even get to enjoy each other's company. Clutching Rosaline's hands, the lady quietly says that they need to talk about a lot, but it still doesn't work out. It's a shame it's over. The girl will have a good rest, and next time they will meet again. An evil smile makes you shrink. Even if the lady is not from this world, the main character still cannot be such a terrible person just because of the way she behaves. The pretense and smile that was given to the hero makes the beauty remain confused by everything that is happening. As she follows the couple with her gaze, the lady only thinks that this deep gaze should be directed only at her. Kahir's gentle hands, in turn, should only touch Ella, because that's what it says in the book. Love will wait just a little longer. The guy asks Rosaline to tell everything about that girl. She was ordered to rest, so she cannot answer. The secretary should be near the emperor, but only during working hours, and not when rest begins. The speech was completely different. An assistant should be there almost always, no matter what. This is what abuse of power looks like. The man is an immoral boss for choosing to behave this way. Barrett's facial expression evokes a slight smile and chuckle. It's more like a riot that didn't work out. The girl is tired. If the guy has something to say, he should have done it a long time ago without delay. Finally gathering his thoughts, the young man promises that he will let the lady go, but only if she answers a few questions. The first one, of course, is about Ella. Kahir wants to know if they are really friends, but does not believe in the honesty of the word yes. The girl may be on the side of the empress, but the heroine cannot know this, although she is asked to answer yes and no. Bowing her head, the lady repeats the same thing again. She's not sure if this is true or not. Then, if there is no problem, the blonde can simply kill the beauty who has become boring to him. This is impossible, because the lady is the destiny of the emperor. He clarifies again, because he's not sure if he knows anything about this. The blonde intently examines the face of the girl, who is trying not to bite her lips so as not to arouse suspicion. Nothing is known, but it would be best for the prince to leave. The lady shoes him out the door, leaning against it. Turning to Derek, the young man asks to check Rosaline's social circle. Lately, she has her head in the clouds or looks unwell. This does not affect the work in any way, because the girl successfully performs everything in the same way as always. The man is worried not only because of this. He is condescending towards other people's mistakes, which, of course, is not true. Virgo was probably just too tired. In addition to the banquet, there was a lot of other work hanging on her, which was exhausting. There was not even any talk about vacation. On previous occasions, when His Majesty offered to give two extra days, she always refused. If the lady does not want to take a vacation, then you can try to show her to the doctor to make sure of everything. Tomorrow, all the doctors of the Imperial Palace will be summoned to the palace. An unhealthy complexion indicated hidden problems. Derek is also tasked with finding out about Ella Palos and how exactly she is connected to the Empress. He and Rosaline have a special relationship. In the morning, a truly amazing incident occurred. Virgo sincerely does not understand how this could even happen, because there were no precedents for this. A huge number of doctors gathered in the room, who during interruptions asked what was hurting the girl. The prince ordered Barrett to be cured, otherwise he would deprive everyone of their positions and responsibilities. They attacked the girl from all sides. The questions were about fatigue, well-being, and other things that could happen and influence. 
Tired of what is happening, the lady is about to leave on business, but she is immediately stopped, shouting that this is prohibited. This is His Majesty's strict order. If it is violated, then it will definitely not be good for everyone around. The heroine blinks her eyes in surprise. She doesn't understand how she managed to get to this point. Leaning closer to his ear, Rui talks about how doctors don't know if they can survive if they don't find the cause. This completely upsets the entire plan for completing the tasks that the heroine managed to build for herself. Finally, breaking free from her shackles, the maiden arrives at the library of the Imperial Palace, where, of course, she meets the prince. The book in the hands of the young man reminds him that it needed to be read. If it weren't for the morning commotion, the lady would have submitted her report in the evening. Noticing the beauty, the blonde asks what happened. He sent many doctors, but in the end, they did nothing. More cruel jokes that don't matter. The girl had no pain, so there was no point in worrying. Throwing the book into the hands of the secretary, the young man says that he has read most of it, so he should finish the rest and submit the report. The girl releases the emperor, but abruptly remembers the priest of Verlos. An answer regarding the temple must be given the very next day. Thanks to the fact that during the last attack Verlos concluded a truce, peace and quiet reigned on the continent. It's worth rewarding everyone. This was a great reason, so the lady promises to finish reading the book and then meet the priest. Changing his mind, the young man asks to forget about it and go to the meeting. The prince thought that the lady liked reading a book, but on the other hand, it would be better to reduce the load. A genius like Kahir can only know the end by looking at the beginning. This means nothing. There is something wrong with the man, judging by how quickly his mood changes. Distracting the conversation, Derek announces that the Viscount from Poshet has arrived. He was supposed to make an appointment, but he showed up unannounced. The agreement to formalize the construction of the temple does not require immediate registration, so you are good to go. The Viscount is not a frivolous person, so it is better to go. The heroine promises to meet with the priest. Calling James, the guy asks him to go with the secretary, not listening to the fact that he can go alone. The guy is not the only one who is tired of Azella's screams when Rosaline pisses her off, so the knight will still go with her. It only meant that it was time to begin the battle to finish everything at once. The priest of Verlos, Anthony, is the one with whom the beauty was supposed to meet, instead of the emperor. The girl enters, greeting Anthony Leos. This is the second main male character in the book to talk to. Bowing, the young man also introduces himself, not suspecting that the secretary has long known all the information about him. Now the man is just a priest, but in the future, he will become the head of the church and strengthen the state's relationship with Ethius. In the novel, he is described as a wonderful person. His qualities are wonderful, just like his appearance. Internally, the young man is quite kind and sensitive. Soon, with his immaculate and sincere love, he will give Ella strength. Silence hangs in the room, and the girl's strange smile causes a little concern about this. Noticing the strange reaction, the girl asks, Is everything okay? Receiving only another smile. The man assures that everything is fine. For some reason, the goddess Atusis, in the guy's imagination, looked exactly the same, so he was a little embarrassed. It seems that the lady has already seen this scene somewhere, but her thoughts are interrupted by the young man, who also mentions not only the girl's appearance. In this scene, Anthony met Ella for the first time, but for some reason, all this is said not to her, but to Rosaline. There is no need to be discouraged. The lady got the impression in her head that this was a guy's pickup phrase, so she could calm down. Even when his beloved Ella clung to his chest, the man did not hug her. Now he behaves more friendly. Interrupting the flow of thoughts, the hero asks what happened to his majesty. Apparently he was too busy. As you know, the emperor carefully resolves even the most insignificant issues, so this increases the amount of work. Verlos is a state that exists thanks to the donations of believers who help the temple. The labors of priests and knights bring their income, but this is not entirely enough to fulfill the plan. Most of the money goes to support those in need, which of course also has an impact. That is why the government is making great efforts to build churches in different parts of the continent and increase the number of believers. With Cahir's help, Verlos continued to spread his influence. They carefully monitor the construction of the temple. The results will be available very soon, so soon it will be possible to finally sign an agreement. This makes Anthony smile. Looking at the man, the lady once again notices the fact that he is too handsome to be a minor character. Kahir is completely different, so he is different. His image is full of charisma and forbidden beauty, while the priest is more gentle. Be that as it may, there was no place for a man in the novel. He bypassed his happiness, giving in to Ella. 
the fateful love of Cahir and Paulos was incredibly strong. Even if they wanted to, no one could do anything to win. Noticing changes in his face, the young man again asks about his health. Virgo has arrived because of work. There is no need to think about anything. Anthony is doing great. The only negative is that he sits in the office, so there is absolutely no one to talk to. If it's not difficult for a girl, she could talk to a man who just wanted to spend time in company. The boy looks more like a cute puppy, judging by his cute behavior. It is quite difficult to refuse such a person. The heroine thinks about it and then asks for advice. It's about her friend, not the girl herself. After hearing everything, the young man makes a verdict. The secretary's friend perceives the man as her son, whom she cares about. This seems more like the truth. A friend is happy because her friend can solve problems. The girl was truly happy because his majesty was becoming more and more humane towards people. The way a lady takes care of her friend can be deciphered as parental love and care. Sometimes when she sees a man in her chest, something hurts and her heart pounds. She feels like when a mother watches her child's first steps. This is understandable, but the conversation is still not over. The friend is worried about something else that incredibly needs to be talked about. A girl has appeared who is suitable for the guy, but her friend has mixed feelings. Every time the heroine sees her, her mood worsens and a chill runs down her spine. What the blue-eyed girl is talking about is simple human jealousy. This happens to absolutely everyone. Ancient legends talk about how mothers once chose their daughters-in-law according to their tastes. The situation is the same here. The future head of the church really holds his own. He thinks on the level of centuries and nations. That heaviness in my heart was there for a reason. The virgin looked at his majesty like a mother looks at her child, for whom she is worried. It became easier, but for some reason my soul became restless. So quickly, evening and sunset came, and with it came thoughts about the emperor. Apologizing, the lady asks for forgiveness for taking up so much of the young man's time, realizing that the conversation that took place helped her. Of course nothing happened. Anthony smiles, hoping that they can chat some other time, at least once. If a man met a lady friend, he would talk about the law that exists. You cannot enter into a marriage that your mother opposes, because there is nothing more accurate than intuition. The girl blinks her eyes in surprise. If this is indeed the case, then you should think about your further actions. Mr. Priest explained everything, making the lady stop worrying. They are like a family that has been living together for a long time. Already walking along the corridor to her office, the girl is stopped by Rui. She had been looking for the secretary for several minutes. His Majesty, after the conversation, went to rest, which means the matter is something else. The heroine received an urgent telegram from her friend. She doesn't even quite understand who it is at first. Rui is not sure of the veracity of the letter, because as far as she knew, the heroine had no friends outside the castle. Running her eyes over the lines, the girl asks the maid to say that she has not been seen until she leaves. It is impossible to get outside the palace. The sun will set very soon, so it is unclear where Rosaline is going. As it turned out, it was impossible to leave even for a short time. Even James, standing in silence all this time, confirms this. If the emperor finds out that the blue-eyed girl left the palace without permission, there may be problems, but it is still important. In the end, James went with the girl to the place where the girls were going to meet. Both had to put on raincoats. The man cannot stay outside, but must stay at least ten steps from the table. While at one of the tables, the blonde takes off her hood, allowing herself to be noticed and come closer. Of course, it turned out to be Ella. No one else, in their right mind, would have asked to meet so late, in an unknown place. A lady of noble birth should not go to such places alone. The lady asks what the conversation will be about, since they are not so close that Paulos would call Rosaline at any time. They will soon get closer. In the future, when the maiden marries his majesty, this will completely change. The girl is aware of the plot, so the soldier will help. She may try to arrange Ella's personal life. The hand clenches with anger. They're both out of this world, and it's better to follow the plot. But that's not really that important anymore. If we remember Cahir's childhood described in the novel, then starting from the age of six, failures began precisely when the previous emperor abandoned his mother, Lysia. Five years later, when he was about eleven, Azella gave birth to Karen, and the boy fell into disgrace with adversity because of what happened. Soon, the emperor completely turned his back on him, so the young man lived until he was twenty years old without even receiving proper love. Since then, the guy's life was filled with wars and killing enemies, which gave him at least a drop of peace. The beast with a deep wound in his heart was no longer there, for Ella cared for him with all her heart. His Majesty, having experienced sincere love, 
found his happiness, which helped him finally calm down and feel loved. This was all only for the benefit of the king, but now Rosaline was not sure about the current Paulos, who was so different. His majesty will not suffer, so standing up, the lady announces that she will not help. The current Ella is not suitable for the emperor, and her reaction proves this. The virgin jumps up and screams. The heroine is just a minor character, so she has no rights. If Barrett had not existed, they would have been together a long time ago. This is where Ella is wrong. Everything went wrong not because of the girl, but because of herself and the actions that she committed. A girl should just look at herself. She is not at all like the main character, who was kind and sensitive. Unable to bear everything around her, Ella swings, but is stopped by James, who puts a sword to her throat. Nodding, the heroine assures the guy that everything is fine. She doesn't want to ruin Paulos's life even more than it already is. The girl won't succeed. No matter how hard she tries, all attempts will fail, and Rosaline will personally take care of this. In the future, you should not touch the secretary unless you have an extra life lying around in your pocket. She saves the maiden from the blade for the last time. After the girl went to meet the priest, the emperor arrived to meet the viscount. With all due respect, this is not appropriate. The young man asks to arrange a meeting in advance, at least next time. Bowing his head, the brunette greets the emperor. He asks to forgive him because the circumstances turned out to be much more complicated. The whole problem is that very soon Prince Karen is supposed to get married. He has already reached that age. Not understanding how this happened, the young man grins. He considered the guy nothing more than a stupid child. Usually in the corridor, the blonde man tries to somehow speak to the emperor, but his mother did not allow him. I can't believe that such a person has grown into someone who can now get married. It seemed that the boy was still a child. Her Majesty, the Empress considers girls from various families, which means she chooses a suitable bride. This is not a threat in any way, but if the heir to His Highness is born earlier, then this will change everything. If they come to power, the Emperor will not be able to stop it, because the Imperial family is always ready. His Highness should marry first. This will give a good impetus to ensure that Karen does not even try to climb onto the throne. The man knew this, but does not want to abandon anyone, like the previous Emperor. This is not a problem for emotions. In such a situation, only political stability and the security of the imperial family are important. Everything that is about to happen is too much for Kahir's head. He wouldn't have wanted to start on this note, but there was no choice. The gaze falls on the place where Rosaline usually sits. The man hopes that the girl is resting well and enjoying her solitude. Milady has arrived at the estate and opens the door with a loud knock, rushing inside with an angry look on her face. The maid from the doorway begins to talk about how everyone was worried about the mistress, but she only asks to leave her alone. Closing the door to her room, the blonde doesn't understand how she got to this point. Everything should be different. Previously, everything was only for the heroine. Kahir's wealth and even love belonged to Ella, who believed that she deserved it. Opening one of the cabinets in the nightstand near the table, the heroine looks at the book, only remembering her past life. Last time there were no problems and no obstacles that could interfere with the meeting. One day, opening her eyes while lying down, she found herself in her favorite novel as the main character. Nobody realized that she was not real. Thanks to the book and Paulus's role, living in her body was not at all difficult despite what was predicted. Everything went exactly according to the plot. The lady met Castor in the ballroom, and they fell in love at first sight. After some time, a solemn wedding took place, at which Ella was the happiest bride. Like any other novel, the story ended on a happy moment without showing the rest. The blonde hoped that the relationship with the guy would not worsen. She wanted him to look only at her alone. The lady had no intention of letting anyone take away the love of her life. I wanted to enjoy the good moments. The virgin invited the young man to spend the summer without children, but he did not agree. They are of such an age that they perceive loneliness acutely. Instead of listening to the objections, the man gets up to hug the children who came running to the courtyard after the game. This happened more than once. A few days later, the lady was going to share the news with her husband, but he did not listen to her. He learned that Ella had not visited the prince and princess for a week. Children miss their mother, so more attention needs to be paid. After several quarrels and everything that happened, the lady could not stand it and slapped her husband. After this, the empress was taken away by servants. From that day on, Cahir stopped seeing his wife. The virgin lived in a closed castle, thinking that no one should treat her like that. From some point on, everything went wrong, so the lady only wished that she would be given at least one more chance to fix everything. 
The girl was heard and thought that this time she would do everything right. She arrived at that same banquet to begin a love story. For some reason, the suit turned out to be white, not black, and the rest didn't add up either. The guy was dancing with Rosalind. This infuriated the lady. Derek came to remind the emperor that it was already very late, to which he asked if the secretary was planning to get married. The man nods. There are many reasons, but some marriages are still made for connections rather than love. It cannot be said that the brunette does not understand why the guy avoids marriage, since his majesty has never been loved and has not seen this in other people around. A man's marriage became the order of the day at a meeting of aristocrats. You won't be able to put it off any longer, no matter how much you want to do it. The girl remembers last night. She regrets it a little, but in any case, she did the right thing. The plot has already changed anyway. Knocking on the door, the lady almost collides with his majesty, who abruptly opened it. Rosaline has already arrived and asks how it went. Surely the lady is already aware of what happened. The girl was not late, as she thought, because the young man simply arrived much earlier than her. Previously, the emperor ignored such meetings with aristocrats, but now he faithfully attends every meeting and becomes an outstanding ruler. His majesty must be happy. Even if his childhood was as terrible as possible, he will be able to overcome all difficulties. The event, as usual, started with a bang. None of the aristocrats even reported how much was embezzled, which was sad. The knights must be sent, or the emperor himself will go there in order to quickly sort everything out. There is no reason why the young man should not go there, but from the faces of the aristocrats, it is clear that something is wrong. Looking at Secretary Rosalind, men seem to beg with one look to be helped. They want to be rescued, when Cahir, in turn, doesn't quite understand why each of them is staring at Rosaline. There was nothing special, but if you think about it, you can understand that the beauty has changed a little. Blue Eyes raises her gaze, which all this time was focused on the papers she was filling out. The girl does not immediately understand what is wrong with the aristocrats, who are literally screaming for help to get out of this situation as quickly as possible. The man begins to get annoyed that no one takes their eyes off Barrett, so he orders all necessary measures to be taken before the next meeting. Going beyond, the young man once again asks if it's true that nothing has changed in Rosalind. Nothing new, but for some reason the officials looked at the maiden almost all the time. Everyone hoped that the beauty would be able to convince the prince. This is true, but then there's no explanation left for why even the king cannot take his eyes off the lady. The heart begins to pound sharply, even if the doctor said that everything is fine. If the lady doesn't know, then it doesn't matter that much. On the same day, the priest Anthony Leos arrived. He was going to discuss all the details and sign an agreement with the emperor. Sitting down at the negotiating table, the young man thanks him for being invited to dinner. After the greetings, food was brought. Even if it is a dinner with the emperor, they brought too much for three people. The guy doesn't want to seem rude, so of course he says he likes every dish. He usually doesn't eat that much. The emperor knows that in Verlos, gluttony is considered a sin. It's obvious, so of course everyone knows about it. Cahir cannot authorize construction without knowing all the details. This means that it has already been firmly decided to begin construction. Although it took some time, the promise will be fulfilled. The secretary immediately brings his greetings of good luck. This is all thanks to the emperor. He is always attentive to details and even small things that help in management. Watching how the meal went, it eventually dawned on Leos that Rosaline was talking to herself yesterday. It was not about some friend and her acquaintance, but about Barrett and his majesty, with whom she was so close, although she considered it work. Tomorrow will be the day when Rosaline will finally go home. He came very rarely. This is true, because the maiden before the weekend is every two years. Time flies too fast. As usual, she plans to stay there for two days, but if there is nothing urgent, then longer. Over the past five years, the beauty has not even been able to relax on weekends and take care of her health. Previously, the maiden had to be near the emperor so that nothing would happen. Now, professional officials have graduated from the academy. Barrett will also be able to go on indefinite leave, which makes her happy. There will be tea parties and a quiet life. As a result, the dreams faded. The girl is given only three days instead of vacation. This is the maximum that can be allowed. The heroine was going to find out about Ella during her vacation, but now this will have to be postponed. She will not leave the emperor just like that, even knowing how much Cahir hates Azella, she teamed up with him. The girl is trying to bargain. Four days, and then five days, which is what she was caught doing, since the answer to both options is no. His Majesty does the same in negotiations, and apparently Rosaline only learns bad things, which doesn't have a very good effect. 
If a person is determined, he maintains it to the end. If not, then he screams at the top of his voice. These are the words of the prince, and this is not a bad influence. The girl becomes more and more charming. Catching himself at this thought, the young man is surprised. Noticing the sudden change in his face, the maiden leans closer, asking if he needs any help. The beauty looks beautiful at that very moment when she blinks her eyes like a child. The guy is silent, but understands that he is going crazy because of fatigue. The problem isn't Rosaline. It's him. In any case, Barrett will not be given more than three days. Therefore, getting up from his seat, the young man pushes the heroine out of the room. Wishing good night, the man slams the door right in front of the secretary's nose, hinting at the end of the conversation. Rui, who is usually after the woman, suggests going to the hot springs this time. The girl only has three days, so she won't even be able to rest. Recently, many places have appeared for just one day, so my friend doesn't give up. The conversation about vacation is interrupted by a familiar voice. This, of course, turned out to be Anthony, who, seeing the secretary, waves his hand. The girl was lucky to see a man just before leaving, so she bows down. The blonde returns to Verlos. He needs to leave for just one dough and quickly convey the good news. The virgin was very pleased to talk with the priest, and this is true. He helped make the decision regarding Ella. Blushing a little, the guy says that as soon as he thinks about Ethius, he immediately thinks about the young lady with pink hair. If the lady has time, he would like to have a cup of tea with the lady before she leaves. This must happen now. The guy is going to say something else about his girlfriend who is involved here. The conversation starts with the simplest things. The guy has never been to this cafe, so he doesn't know how delicious the coffee is. The girl suggests adding milk or honey, which can greatly improve the taste. Adding what was suggested, the young man begins to cough. This taste seems too strange for something like this. The recommendation was in vain. You need to drink longer to taste the wonderful taste. Looking at the mistress, the man promises that he will not take too much time. He understands exactly how everything happens. As for my friend, everything turned out to be more confusing. Perhaps the conversation was not about a girl he knew. This was all said about the heroine herself and about His Majesty Cahir. This becomes noticeable almost immediately. Anthony turned out to be quite insightful. Virgo didn't want to lie, but it wasn't to extract an apology. People constantly suffer or conflict and cannot make a choice. The topic changed suddenly. The guy doesn't let up. It is easy to be tempted, so Virgo also needs to make the right choice. Mr. Priest can speak more freely because the beauty is able to take care of herself. In the end, the truth was told. Excessive maternal love can also be toxic and have a strong impact. Parents play a very important role, but they must know when to let their child leave the nest. They can devote their whole life to their child, but this is not the right thing to do. Recently, there have been rumors that aristocrats are looking for a lady who will become empress. They have been talking about this for quite some time. If the girl continues to be distracted so diligently, she will remain his secretary for the rest of her life. It sounds like horror. The man is not worried that the lady will interfere with the wedding, but wants to warn. Anxiety is too high, so it can lead to stupidity. People in love often lose the ability to think sensibly as they begin to immerse themselves in their love. The virgin would never harm Cahir's chosen one, because she is still of sound mind and memory. Still, Anthony's worries are not unfounded. He knows exactly what he's talking about. If you think about it, even the virgin's beautiful mother has changed a lot after her brother's wedding. From now on, ladies cannot be near the emperor. She understood this, so she thanks Mr. Priest. Finally, the lady returned home. Immediately from the threshold, throwing herself into her mother's arms, the beauty smiles. Mom will always support and know how to console, which is why the girl missed her so much every time in the castle. The father smiles, too. The daughter became prettier while they didn't see her, and even if they had to wait quite a long time, it finally happened. Inviting Rosalind to sit on one of the sofas, the lady says that they have something to talk about. While drinking tea, the man quietly asks how old his daughter is this year, as if he himself doesn't know. The girl is already 23 years old, and when she went to the castle, she promised to return just at that time. It is at this age that life is just beginning. By holding out the envelope, the man says that there is a marriage proposal inside. As usual, a meeting is taking place in the castle. Leaning on his hand, the blonde offers to continue after a short break. Rosaline didn't move from her spot. She is thinking intently about something, trying to understand something in her head. The emperor noticed that the secretary had been behaving rather strangely ever since she returned from her parents. The mother tried to convince the beauty. She did not think about working as a secretary until the very end of her life. 
The couple found a wonderful count with a good clean reputation for their daughter. You need to use this opportunity to sort everything out and finally return home to arrange your personal life. Everything happens suddenly, so the lady asks for time to think. Of course, ordinary life is expensive happiness. It's not that difficult, given the circumstances. When the daughter arrives, the father expects to hear a certain answer from her. Thoughts about marriage and work filled her head so much that the beauty did not hear her name being called for the first time. Rising from her seat, the girl quietly asks if the man has some errand for her. The banquet went well, and the maiden had to perform impossible tasks for some time. The emperor wants to reward the man who is so diligent. Looking into the woman's eyes, the young guy asks what she really wants. It's strange that this is said by a person who did not give the heroine a rest. This can be considered very rare to hear. Starting to lose his temper, the blonde asks again. Perhaps this is the very chance for a new life for Rosalind. Everything that was in the book is repeated. The girl has thought it over, so she finally asks to resign. The words make the young man almost jump out of his seat. He does not believe, or does not want to believe, what is said. He won't allow something like that to happen. In her defense, the lady recalls that the emperor promised to do whatever he wanted. Rosaline wanted to leave this world, and this is obvious, because parting with this position can only be done with death. This is already too much. The girl doesn't want to work for his highness all her life, so this is upsetting. The couple stands in complete silence, just looking at each other. They can't take their eyes off each other. Seeing as no one comes in, Derek goes inside, realizing that the atmosphere there is not the best. Approaching quietly, the brunette asks if they are discussing something important, to which the young man, without looking away, asks to leave. Already forgetting about the secretary, the guy persistently asks Rosalind what is the main need of a person. It's food and the ability to survive, which is the wrong answer. This makes the lady freeze, since in her past life, she worked tirelessly just for this. Barrett really doesn't know what is important. She still has a lot to learn. There is no point in all this if everyone eventually dies, leaving the world anyway. One wise man said that it should be so. Now Kahir rejects the lady's request to save his life. This man's behavior at lunchtime greatly angered the heroine. She wants to scream or even cry. Leaning back on the pillows, the lady sighs. She couldn't even think that she would be refused. If you think about it, being a secretary is, of course, difficult, but not so bad. This has its advantages. Virgo was used to busy days, given the fact that His Majesty had changed quite a bit. The lady receives money for her work, and her reputation has improved. Now the heroine can freely communicate with aristocrats, so there are not enough fingers to count all the advantages. All the same, if the lady is a secretary all her life, she will lose absolutely everything, and her plan will fail. The night drags on slowly, and the girl still can't sleep. She is tired, but her thoughts are too annoying. In Etius, married daughters of aristocrats can no longer work, so combining them will not work in any case. It turns out that you just need to fall in love, but not with anyone. Rui and Derek met in the palace, so the only hope is for someone nearby. Still, not every detail is so important. The people around were always friendly, but Kahir got in the way. Appearing nearby, the young man seemed to point to someone who really should be paying attention. This incredibly irritated the heroine, because because of the man, the standards were now too high. There were no more hopes for sleep, so the girl got up from her seat to look out the window. Looking at the night sky, the lady wonders why the prince reacted the way he did. He usually doesn't get attached to people. In the novel, the only close person was Ella Paulos. She's the only one who meant anything to a man who didn't care. The girl realizes that she paid too much attention to love. It's all because of attachment and a sense of duty. It seems that this was just a slight gesture of politeness, which only once again proved that the girl was confused. The blonde also doesn't understand what to do. Other people can even tell by his mood that he is spoiled. Sitting down on a chair, the man throws his head back. He was very confused, no longer understanding what exactly he should do. Memories of what happened just a few hours ago come into my head. The man will not allow his girlfriend to leave her position. There is nowhere else to find a person like Barrett, who understands the emperor at a glance and quickly carries out everything. Derek would like to be with Rui, so he hopes they will let him go. The guy turns to the brunette with a request. A sudden memory came to mind that the blonde had previously asked the servant to make a report on Rosaline, but had never received it. Having already looked into this issue, the guy did not find anything suspicious. But it was not because of this. Virgo is ready to go through anything to protect the state. Of course this is true, and the brunette realized too late that his answer turned out to be incorrect. They have been working together for five years now, 
but for some reason the acquaintance still doesn't know anything. After all that has been said, the prince reveals the truth, which is amazing. Rosaline has been in love with Kahir for a long time, which is immediately obvious. This sounds more like nonsense. Gentleman's secretary cannot be in love with the person she works with. The man was interested in something else. He needed all sorts of details, or at least advice on how to change the girl's point of view. The lady is truly a strange person, especially lately. Nothing comes to mind to think about it. It turned out that a marriage proposal came to Barrett's family, and this happened not so long ago. Not understanding what the problem is, the young man seems to be asking himself whether the blue-eyed older brother is divorced. In Aetius, divorce is legal, but the marriage union is considered sacred and eternal. Violation of a vow among aristocrats is considered a terrible sin that is not easily forgiven. This usually has consequences. Perhaps the heroine said this to leave because of the scandal associated with Roy, because her reputation could suffer. Rosaline thought about leaving for the good of someone she loved very much. As always, this is just kindness. This is true, because the lady, like no one else, is worried about the reputation of the royal family, and for the sake of water and remarriage, they can spark a scandal. I don't want to upset his majesty, but Derek says that the proposal came not to his brother, but to Barrett herself. Noticing how the guy clenches his fists, the brunette asks with concern in his head if everything is okay. Trying to smile through his anger, the blonde man, lowering his voice, asks who sent the request for marriage. It was none other than Earl Svitt, who would certainly get what he deserved. Derek needs to deal with this. No stone should be left unturned from a man. This is no longer a request, but a real order. You can't tell anyone about this, so the guy will report directly to the emperor. Orders do not need reasons, so the order must be followed anyway. I didn't even want to imagine Rosaline getting married. She would pack her things and say thanks for all the years. Then the couple would get married. Their happiness would most likely know no bounds, and they would enjoy each other. Over time, a family portrait would appear in the living room, depicting a happy family. Such pictures of the future already made the young man shudder with hatred for the Count. This cannot be allowed. A few days later, the Emperor still thought about Svit, who dared to send a marriage letter at every free moment. Rosalind finds it difficult to concentrate on work. Things didn't go according to plan, but she reassures herself that there will be a chance to talk again. Handing over the folder, the lady begins to talk about the report on the construction of the temple. The council believes that a quieter site on Bretzel Street rather than Axel Street would be suitable. The blonde immediately asks the reason. There are a lot of aristocrats living on 2nd Street, which can have a big impact. The street has always belonged to the aristocracy, and if different people come there, it can cause discontent. People living on Bretzel are quite relaxed about foreigners and new religions. At the meeting of aristocrats, it is worth noting that two places were allocated for construction. The emperor himself is inclined towards the Bretzel site. This way, there will be much fewer objections, which makes the girl smile and praise this decision. The man has changed a lot, because previously in such situations, the virgin had to decide everything herself, and when she did something, there were many disputes at the meeting. Now there was no doubt, because Kahir would go down in history as the outstanding emperor of Aetius. Raising his head, the young man notices that Rosaline is again thinking about something, not intending to say anything. Perhaps there are thoughts about marriage in her head. So jumping up from her seat, the hero thinks about a gift that only he can give. Coming closer and standing next to her, the man asks the girl to find a pendant with a pink diamond. Blinking her eyes, the girl doesn't quite understand why she was asked to do something so specific. It is needed as a gift, but if the prince says for whom exactly, it will be possible to find out about the person's preferences. Rosalind's voice is too sweet. Losing the thought that was coming into his head, the blonde simply listens to the timbre. Bowing her head to the side, the maiden quietly calls to his majesty. She would like to discuss everything. This is not a gift, but a bonus. This is the only thing that becomes clear from what the young man says. This will all be done for Rosaline, so it changes its meaning. Virgo erases everything written in the notebook. The girl doesn't need something like that at all. She had never hoped for a gift of this kind. The stone is so rare that only three or four of them can be found in a year on the entire continent. The gift cannot be for Barrett. A man is going to give such a gift not only because it is simply not needed. A gift with such an exchange system does not seem too good, and even for the heroine, it is too much. For that kind of money, it's better to buy a shop with necklaces near the palace than some kind of pendant that you won't need. The man tells Rosaline that she shouldn't mind. If agreement is not heard, then an exact date will be set. The king will be busy, so he is not sure that he will be able to be there, but still asks for consent again. 
Softening his gaze, the young man asks what the heroine wants then. He doesn't expect to hear anything unpleasant. Looking with big eyes, almost begging, the beauty asks to resign and go home. This, of course, gets the answer no. The hero immediately removes his hand from his interlocutor's chin. There is no way he will allow this. There is silence in the room, which is interrupted by Derek. He learned everything he needed about Count Svit, just as he was ordered. Nothing suspicious was found. This is just a count living on the outskirts of the capital, and his estate, although small, has fertile soil, as well as his financial situation. The man clearly ordered to know every detail, so he is not satisfied with the answer, nothing to worry about. The only detail was that in the winter three years ago, due to severe frosts, the demand for fur increased. At that time, Count Svit was one of the aristocrats who bought these furs. He got rich, of course, but his deals were legal. Taking a sip of the drink, the young man smiles. This is not a small thing, because it seems that the hero has too many shortcomings to marry Barrett. As you know, three years ago, because of everything, the aristocrats demanded a reduction in the tax on the purchase of fur. As soon as it decreased, it is strange how exactly they wanted to compensate for the expenses that were given. Derek remembers that they then proposed cutting funding for funds to help widows and orphans, which turned out to be absurd. This is a crime that caused losses to the empire, but since a lot of time has passed, the culprit will get off with a minor punishment. Count's feet will be in the detachment and will go to the border. Just five years will be enough. This raises doubts, because you cannot send an aristocrat to the border who only knows how to read books. He will die there from depression or from injury, but he has to agree with a wise decision so as not to piss off Cahir. Rui runs as fast as he can, calling the secretary for the Lord, and then hands over an urgent telegram that arrived from home. The parents asked to pass it on as quickly as possible so that everything would be clear to Rosalind. Opening the envelope, the lady reads that the marriage proposal has been withdrawn. The Count decides to join a detachment of knights and go to the border. It's strange that a son from a family of aristocrats proposed a wedding and now suddenly goes to the border. Almost immediately, the image of the blonde man who previously said that there was no way to lose his position comes to mind. The girl does not want to believe that Kahir is somehow involved in this, but all the facts point to one person. Hiding in the corridor behind one of the columns, the lady looks at Derek as he passes by. In a quiet voice, the heroine calls the man, who does not even immediately understand what they want from him, and who this person is who is calling him. Turning his head, the young man notices Rosaline, who puts a finger to her mouth, and then calls him to come closer. Turning to the lady, the guy asks what she forgot here. Obviously, this is all for a reason. There is no need to make noise, so the lady, without saying anything, seems to ask you to quickly follow her, because they need to talk. The girl quietly approaches the door, without even saying a word, even if the man standing behind once again asks questions. Finally, turning to the brunette, the maiden asks if he knows how this happened with Count Svit. Lowering his eyes to the floor, the young man lies that he himself has not personally dealt with such an issue. I can't believe that the reason is somehow connected with the maiden herself. She notices sudden changes in the man's face and emotions. Recently, His Majesty was monitoring the activities of the market monopoly of the aristocrats, and it turned out that the Count was receiving illegal profits, and therefore he was punished. The guy tries to explain the fact that he is not lying, but a reasonable question arises. The prince had to tell the maiden, This is the truth, so sir must tell it like it is, without trying to hide anything from prying eyes. The young man cannot tell the truth. He wants to marry Rui, have children, and live happily ever after, which he won't be able to do if he tells. As the maiden herself knows, his majesty values the country, so everything he does, he does out of simple love. It's true. Even Rosaline herself should be aware that the king cares about his subjects and lands. The man quickly runs away, saying that he has business. It seems that there is more to it, although this may not be true. While checking the market situation, they found evidence, but sent him to service immediately after the wedding proposal. This seems like a mere coincidence, so the virgin decides to lean towards this. She thinks about unnecessary things. At a meeting of aristocrats, they are going to solve the problem with the monopoly. The prince starts first. Opening the office, the lady is about to go inside to begin negotiations. The emperor narrows his eyes a little, but then asks where the heroine was who just disappeared. Virgo lowers her gaze, since there is only one logical explanation. She was writing a reply letter to a telegram from home. The man is surprised that something like this was sent at all, because the lady had just recently returned from home. There was something important there. Of course, His Majesty knew what he was talking about, because just recently, 
Derek said that he carried out the order according to the count. It is now clear that the engagement was called off. This cannot but please, because the beauty will no longer walk around and say that she wants to leave. Trying to forget about everything that happened, the lady only says that there was absolutely nothing special there. After the meeting ends, the young man asks only Rosaline to remain, asking her about the pendant. The virgin does everything she can, but the man himself knows how rare the stone is, and there are almost no places to get it. Grinning, the blonde nods. He, of course, knows all this, but he has already planned something. They are precious, but not that precious, because the king's crown has quite a few similar diamonds. Drawing attention to the crown, the prince suggests not to try in vain if this task is so overwhelming. Trying to get one of the stones, the young man was stopped by the secretary. This is not possible, especially with such an important thing. These stones are difficult to find, so the guy just wants to give at least one to complete the task, which does not raise any questions in his mind. They all belong to the hero, which means that you can do whatever you want. It's not such a big deal. It is a royal heirloom of the royal family, so it even contains the tears of the goddess Athusis. This is an asset that cannot be spoiled. You won't have to wait long for the stones. The girl promises that she will get at least one tomorrow, and then she will be able to complete the task. The guy asks if this is serious or not true, but he notices a slight fear in his eyes, so he falls silent. It is obvious that the blonde can trust his secretary like no one else, because if Rosaline promises something, she always does it. The situation seems to amuse the man, because the beauty notices a slight smile on her lips, which freezes. Within a day, everything was done. The girl handed the stone to the master, who promised to make something beautiful out of it. Opening the case, the man reveals a beautiful pendant with an almost shining stone that seems excellent. The miracle was ready, despite such a short deadline, and this incredibly pleased the heroine, who no longer hoped for anything. The design was developed by the emperor himself, so, of course, it could not have happened without help. The heroine, of course, did not know this. As soon as the maiden found the diamond, several people were immediately sent to the jeweler, who managed to prepare everything. The young man does not know who exactly the pendant is for, but for some reason he is sure that it is a gift for someone very important, apparently. The simple yet elegant shape of the pendant suits the diamond and enhances its beauty. The seller is about to pack the item. Standing next to the training knights, the young man sighs. He doesn't like all the techniques and how they use them. Everyone who has gathered here, according to the hero, is too weak. They don't have enough training and preparation. Even without hearing the sweet voice, the young man hears the aroma that comes from the back, making it clear who has arrived. Sure enough, it turned out to be Rosaline, who came along with a small packaged box made of velvet. Clearing his throat, the guy says that he is better than all the knights taken, so they will never cope with them. If they want to be knights, they must be just like Hembug. The commander has been holding a sword in his hands since he was five years old, and now he is one of the best. You can't compare two different levels, but the hero still doesn't like it very much, because he demands better. Interrupting his majesty's grumbling, the lady reminds him that the pendant has already been made. The virgin is about to take it and leave, but the man asks to open the box and let him check everything. Looking at the little thing under the sun, the blonde smiles contentedly. The job was truly done perfectly. Asking Rosaline to turn around, the guy asks her to remove her hair and let her put the thing around her neck. It's strange that the hero chose this particular place to do something. There are a lot of unwanted people around. His Majesty wants to see how the pendant will look on the owner, but she asks that she put it on herself. Expressing his disagreement, the prince raises his hand so high that the secretary cannot even reach his cherished dream. The man himself chooses what to do with his gift, so this battle will end in Cahir's favor. Once again, asking the lady to remove her hair, the young man orders her not to be stubborn. At any moment, he can order everyone to look at them. Asking what soap or perfume Rosaline uses, the guy still puts the pendant on his neck, trying to fasten it faster. Fastening the clasp turned out to be much more difficult than the young man thought. It doesn't work the first time, which makes the girl swallow hard. Perhaps this is all because Kahir is incredibly nervous. He doesn't even understand why everything is pounding inside. Realization comes much later. The blonde is trying to shake off the obsession that came over him during such an easy task. The hero was even able to defeat the enemy, the name of only a hundred knights, when his strength was ten times greater than the others. But for some reason, now everything has changed. The aroma is really quite intoxicating. The virgin turns her head and quietly asks if she can put her hair back. Approaching even closer, the guy sniffs the body, which smells of a floral aroma, realizing that he has not heard it before. 
The man was too fast, so almost jumping away, the lady asks what happened that he is now behaving like this. Not really paying attention to what was said, the blonde grabs the lady's hand and pulls her very close to him. Virgo blinks her eyes in surprise. She would like to scream, but she can't so as not to attract attention. People are still watching, so the heroine tries to move away, although all in vain. She must answer only the truth. The main knight, noticing this, tries to distract the others from viewing the picture, so he orders 100 blows. Now, when no one will look, the man once again asks to speak only the truth and not lie. Bowing his head very close to his neck, the young man asks what this scent is. It's not perfume, but then what is it? The smell seems sweet or even cloying, indicating that the lady is still using something to achieve this. It seems that the young man is so interested that the heroine gives up. This is a body talc that is usually used after a bath. There is nothing more to say. Virgo asks to let her go so that they can continue the conversation without any problems that affect so much. Without taking a single step back, the young man again asks for an answer to another important question. Even if this is not true, the lady still continues to say that she wants to quit. If she wants to leave, what is she going to do after? This seems like a bad dream. But even if the lady has her own plan, she is no longer sure of the veracity of her actions and desires. Leaning even closer, the king asks his question again. He tries to tactfully push the heroine to answer. Rosaline must answer. She can't be so greedy just because of the pink diamond she was just given. Taking a few steps away so as not to hug her friend again, the lady says that she wants to live a normal life. A happy life consists of having tea parties and get-togethers with aristocrats, traveling, embroidering, and studying what the heroine likes. This will no longer limit the virgin. She wants to wear beautiful jewelry and clothes. All this time the beauty was restraining herself, so now she was turned on because of some question and the pendant that was given to her. During these five years, the lady could not enjoy luxury. This is all what seems to be a devaluation of the problems. The heroine will not be able to enjoy this all the time. She plans to lead such a luxurious life after her dismissal. It is not immediately clear what exactly is meant, because the lady is not even going to bathe in luxury, but simply enjoy what she has. The emperor says this is all because he is worried about the secretary. For a person, the desire for a better life is a common thing. For some reason, the beauty is ready to leave, even if she lives at an average level, not really allowing herself too much. The meeting of the aristocracy begins, so the blonde puts his hand on his head, saying that he listened to the beauty's desire. Virgo lived with a man like a prince, so she begins to get tired of this, just like diamonds when wearing them for a long time. The man has lived a grateful life from the very beginning, so he doesn't know what it's like to live simply. They will return to this issue later. The knights, who took a brief break from training to get some rest, stare in surprise. I can't believe that His Majesty bowed his head. He allowed an assistant to place the crown on his head before the meeting. Virgo asks to be patient a little longer, because of course she cannot do anything about the meeting of aristocrats. Taking a few steps back, the beauty adjusts her crown, saying that she has finally finished everything. Every time it's the same, but the secretary doesn't have time to get lost in her thoughts because Derek is calling her. The smile itself fills the face. The lady tries not to show it, but she is truly proud of his majesty. Everyone who is supposed to have already gathered in the room. The conversation turns to the construction of a temple in Verlos, and it turns out that all matters have already been settled. Everyone worked hard, so now they are waiting hard for their praise. Previously, they were even afraid to look at the king. The whole problem was that before, most were incompetent. Now everything has completely changed, which made them rejoice. Thus, circumstances themselves helped. The meeting begins because Bretzel Street has been chosen for the building. Pashit, after finishing, of course, again turned to the emperor. He needed to discuss something, knowing that he would not be left behind. The emperor brought peace to the empire, but power only extended inland. To fix this, the empress's place needs to be filled. Subjects need a warm and caring woman. The well-being of the imperial family is the key to stability for the state. The aristocrats still haven't changed anything, because they still want his majesty's wedding. The empress who is alive now is not the guy's own mother, but her younger sister, so the position could be jeopardized at any moment. The emperor's family members are precious, so the concerns are understandable. Everyone wants stability, and this has long been no secret. Turning to Rosaline, the young man pulls her out of her thoughts. He wonders if Madame Secretary wants this. Count Pashit is right. Ella cannot become the new empress, so the lady only says that it's time to think about it. The man knew that the girl would have this opinion, but she still decided to ask. 
It was logical. The young man would not like to enter into a marriage of convenience or politics, but there is no choice. If this is what the subjects say, then it's worth preparing a list of candidates. Finally, consent was given, so the aristocrats began to discuss selection. Many have daughters or nieces who have already reached marriageable age. Many immediately understand that they are obliged to nominate themselves. There's not much choice, but it's worth making. Interrupting Lord Ski's conversations, His Majesty did not order a decree on the selection, but asked that it be made as fair as possible. You should be careful with your words, although this is inevitable for a political marriage. You need to be more careful. From the training ground, the lady immediately went to the meeting. She would like to soak in the bath, but no one allowed her to do this. Turning away, the maiden sighs. But the emperor asks her about the question. She nods, waiting for him to be asked. Looking intently at the beauty, the blonde asks if his wedding is ordinary compared to the others. The young man cannot find the right words. He understands that he needs to say something right, but in the end, he gives up. This is the union between the moon and the sun of the empire. It does not fall under the concept of a regular wedding, which of course changes everything. His Majesty's mood noticeably worsened. The lady is practically jumping around singing the praises of what is going to happen. Usually the hero does not speak so ornately, which worries the heroine a little. She doesn't know what happened. Turning away, the young man asks not to talk about it. It is worth returning to the discussion of the ordinary life of a secretary in the future. Interest is present from the very beginning, so the guy asks what the lady wants to do in the future. The lady doesn't even know what exactly she can say in response to what she is being asked about. In the future, she would like to do many things and then find the right man and marry him and have a child. Looking carefully at Rosaline, the young man asks what the maiden means. He didn't quite expect to hear something like that. Combing his hair back with his hand, the man once again asks to say what the girl is going to do. Starting to talk again about tea parties and everything else, the beauty freezes when she is interrupted because they are talking about something else. The girl doesn't believe that she managed to say something wrong. She was just answering the question posed. Finally realizing her mistake, the lady quietly asks if the young man was annoyed by the words about the wedding, because obviously he did not want it. The young man does not seem annoyed, but the lady tells the man who is marrying for convenience that she will do it for love. The guy can't believe that the secretary decided to have her wedding before the emperor himself, because this is not how it should be. The answer becomes clear. No, because a lady has no right to marry much earlier, under any circumstances. There is only one question. If the prince marries, then the maiden also has the right to marry if she finds her love. Night fell, so only James remained on guard. Running inside the office because of the sounds, the man draws his sword. Someone dared to touch his majesty, but instead of seeing the thief, the young man sees the emperor himself. The blonde straightens his hair, remaining just as calm, and only asks to put the sword back in its sheath. The man was late again, but they only ask him what he thinks about what happened during this time. All this was not in order to get rid of the corpse or anything else, because the problem was different. That wasn't what it was for. The blonde quietly asked James to bring Derek quickly. Nobody must know that this happened. It was long after midnight, so the brunette did not understand what they wanted from him. As it turns out, His Majesty wants to prepare a tea party. The event must be impressive. We need to invite all the ladies who are in the capital at the moment. If you calculate the time for preparation, then noon will do. It happened too abruptly and spontaneously. The man has never been interested in anyone, but to keep a specialist next to you, you need to make at least some effort. The words strike like electricity, because the brunette understands everything almost immediately. We are talking about Mr. Secretary. There is no need to ask questions, because if everything is clear, you should start preparing with cookies, cakes, and tea. Everything must be at its best. Aristocrats should be about the same age as Rosaline. You can't even miss anything. Derek thinks he's still asleep, so he pinches his cheek. To help, the emperor does the same. Everything must be perfect, so the servant promises that he will do everything as best as possible. In addition to all this, there is one more request. We need to find a noble lady who will help Barrett at the tea party. They should get along well. She should be an etiquette teacher. Walking out the door, the secretary grabs his head with his hands, starting to scream as much as he can, but silently. A famous priest will be present with the others at the opening of the Verlos temple. I could have dinner with him. There is no right to choose. The priest is the voice of honor, and the rest are just administration. In Verlos, they believe that all people are equal. It becomes clear that this will not play a role. So Rosaline suggests finishing everything as quickly as possible and going on other matters. The meeting will end here. 
Nobody knows exactly who will come, but the discussion is already in full swing. One of the girls says that she heard that there are a lot of handsome men in that country. She can't miss the opportunity. Noticing that the emperor has arrived, the beauty asks if there is any errand, but hears only that they should go somewhere. It is obvious that it is time for tea, so the beauty quickly ties her hair with a feather so that nothing will interfere. Sitting down at the table, the girl collects papers and other documents in one pile to take with her. Turning to Rosalind, the young man asks her to change clothes. He does not immediately say the reason, simply leaving silence around. Nothing is visible, so this becomes a valid reason. We are talking about a pendant that was given as a gift not long ago. The virgin, not understanding, tilts her head to the side. She tried to build a logical chain, but failed. The young man's mood suddenly deteriorated, but he looked at the girl's eyes. They sparkle like precious stones. Walking back, the lady asks what happened. Finding the strangest argument, the young man mentions her disheveled hair. The beauty can handle something like this herself, but she always does the same for the emperor. This is all because the lady is a secretary, and this is part of her duties. It's worth taking advantage of the kindness that is given at least once. The heroine is simply not used to it, although in the future she will have to get used to new things. With these words, the king turns to leave. The young man has changed a lot lately. There were no more logical explanations that I would like to know about. Rosaline froze without moving because there was too much to think about. The young man calls her to follow him. Next time a lady simply must wear a dress with an open neck, even if she doesn't understand why she needs it. No longer trying to express his sincere thoughts, the guy just talks about the pendant, which is not visible because of the collar. The heroine still looks strangely and questioningly into the distance. She doesn't know if she can say anything. The count of guests due to arrive has been completed. Derek monitors the work of the servants, constantly urging them on. Every effort was put into preparation, but the ladies were in no hurry to even go yet. Perhaps not everyone will come with an urgent invitation. Everything has changed. There are too many ladies, even if it seemed like there would be a lot fewer people in the land. The lady does not immediately understand where they are going. Obviously, on this day, the couple will drink tea not in the garden, but in the estate. His Majesty has arrived, therefore, opening the doors. The young man points to the decorations and people. Rosaline said that's what she wanted. Something like this can definitely touch a girl, no matter what. The mood also improved noticeably for both of them. Obviously, the heroine is so touched that she cannot even utter a single extra word that bothers her. His Majesty got it wrong again. When the lady talked about a party, she was talking about a simple tea party with a few people. The ladies around are dressed too smartly. The tea party managed to turn into an exhibition of outfits. A middle-aged woman appears nearby, thanking her for the invitation. Her name is Becky Flint from the baronial family of Flint. It is this man, a famous etiquette teacher throughout the country. The ladies who host the tea party call her gorgeous. The woman is ready to come at any moment, so of course she responded to the invitation to the palace. Tilting her head to the side, the brunette asks with interest who is the organizer of today's banquet. Pointing to Rosalind and placing his hand on his shoulder, the young man says that Barrett is the one who organized such a tea party. The ladies around are whispering. They probably thought it was His Majesty's idea, but it turned out to be the opposite. Bowing her head, the heroine thanks for being called. Madam Secretary definitely did her best to arrange everything. Now it's time to start working. The girl does not immediately understand what is being said, so she blinks her eyes in surprise. The organizer of the event, as is usually customary, is obliged to greet all the guests gathered at his place. Trying to cheer up his friend, the emperor promises that he can look after everything and she can cope with the task. Ella, standing to the side, is also watching what is happening. She's almost ready to charge forward out of anger and nervousness. His majesty is not going to go anywhere. His schedule is too packed with things to do, but for some reason it has now been changed. It will not be possible to hide from the others, however. From the very beginning, the young man did not even guess what exactly Barrett wanted with. Since this happened, the Virgin decides that she should do what was planned from the very beginning. This is the first time, so even if these are just the daughters of aristocrats, the lady is incredibly worried before doing anything. In any case, you cannot lose heart. The lady is trying to assure herself that she will succeed absolutely, no matter what. His Majesty really appreciates the secretary's lady, since the palace opened its doors specifically for tea. They will soon begin selecting candidates for the role of the Empress, but many believe that there is no point in this. It was clear even at the reception that the two had a special connection. Judging even by the professionalism of the lady, it becomes clear that the emperor wants this maiden to stay with him forever.
Approaching the first lady named Rose, the girl greets her, introducing her first and last name. She thanks for attending the tea party. Getting up from her seat, the beauty sits down in a curtsy. She is honored because in the end she was invited. The girl asks about how to call Mrs. Rosalind, so she immediately switches to another form of the name. Rose turns pink, as if she suddenly felt bad or ashamed. She doesn't immediately understand what the problem is. Next up is Mrs. Tari from the baronial family of Kraus. She, like everyone else, expects a greeting. When starting to get acquainted, the girl does not lose sight of the beautiful hair decoration, which receives many compliments. Asking about the designer, the beauty wants them to introduce her quickly, if possible. Noticing another facial expression, as if the heroine is embarrassed, the secretary strokes his eyebrow. Perhaps the lady just made a mistake somewhere. Such compliments almost indicate the untruthfulness of the words. The emperor had told the beauty earlier that there was no need to say something banal because it had too much influence. In five years with his majesty, the heroine was able to perfect her compliment skills, but perhaps they are not suitable for ladies. Derek was the one who kept working. He had no right to rest as long as Rosaline was the one to rest. The king's attention is drawn to Barrett, who is chatting pleasantly with everyone else. He doesn't really like this. The brunette raises his head, asking if he misheard him or if the prince really said something. Not wanting to disturb the secretary in any way, the blonde grabs him by the head, asking him to concentrate on his work and not pay attention to the king. The man remains as interested as usual. He set to work just like a servant because there was work left for them to do. The strange thing is that even if a second ago all eyes were on the king, now the ladies could not get away from Rosalind. She's beautiful, but this is too much. There will always be too many questions, because the hero cannot understand the woman. Even he himself cannot look away. Even just looking at a girl, it immediately becomes clear that there is something special about her that affects other people around her. Continuing the conversation with the ladies, the heroine notices that someone is watching her. At first it seems that it is his majesty, so she turns her head. It seems like it was something that was just plain to show. The man is busy talking with Derek about the matters that remain. Still, it was a feeling based on reality. Turning to the side, the girl noticed Ella laughing with the others at one of the tables. The heroine hoped that they would never meet again. It was unlikely, but in the end, it happened. Approaching the desired table, the lady talks about how glad she is to see all those who took the time and arrived. Mrs. Ella is wonderful as always. She says that she was praised because everything looks exactly the same as usual. This is not true because even a glance is enough to understand how hard the girl was getting ready, probably since the very morning. The lady thought that this was the emperor's tea party, so it was worth putting in more effort. Upon learning this, the young man will be sad. The girl was completely misunderstood, but I don't want to listen to it anymore. Rosaline turns around and leaves to talk to the others. Approaching her table, the lady pulls out a plate of orange pudding and offers to try it. This is His Majesty's favorite dessert, but for some reason everyone, as one, asks if Barrett likes pudding. The girl freezes. She would like to sink into the ground because of the shame she feels, but this is not possible. They are not interested in the emperor, but in herself. Waving her hands in agreement, the lady assures that she also likes this kind of thing. It's worth trying to understand the taste. Everyone who managed to get a portion is amazed at how wonderful the taste is. If they need more, you can always ask. The woman standing next to her doesn't believe that this is possible. She was afraid that nothing would work out, but she can't believe that this is Rosaline's first tea party. The heroine was at her best because she was able to take care of everyone around her and was quite polite. Paulos was the only one dissatisfied. Rosaline is in the spotlight not because she is good, but because she is next to the emperor, and this is a fact for her. There was always a place with the emperor for Ella, and even after everything that happened, she still firmly believed in such a thing. Watching the man leave the room, the lady realizes that if they are left alone, then everything will probably change. Going out into the street, the blonde inhales pleasant air with his free chest, which slightly cools his consciousness from the inside. Derek tried to stop the prince because of the amount of work, but he promised to come back pretty quickly. The brunette is an excellent secretary and someone who will come to the rescue, but there is still something missing in him. Rosaline was always the one who cared a lot more. She monitored the amount of work and took time for tea and rest. The lady made sure that the man did not experience much stress and remained in good shape for other tasks. The girl worked with the hero for only five years, but already managed to get to know him inside and out. Such a valuable person should not be fired. It's worth coming up with a good reason to stop Barrett. 
The girl is not interested in jewelry, clothes, or shoes because she believes that these are not necessary things. A more useful gift would be a piece of land. The land will bring profit and benefit, so it will be suitable for a secretary. My thoughts are interrupted by someone's voice. The blonde came to greet the son of the empire in person. Curtsying, the girl closes her eyes, smiling lightly in order to inspire at least a drop of trust in herself. Noticing a strange expression on her face, the lady realizes that she most likely is not remembered. She introduces her first and last name again. The heroine is a close friend of Beria, and they saw each other at the last tea party when she suddenly became ill and they left Lucat. The only thought that flashed through my head was that the lady remained on the side of the empress, no matter what. If this is not a friend, then it's strange why she behaves this way. Rosalind is in the banquet hall now, so there's no point in being in the courtyard. Bowing her head, the blonde admits that she went out to get some fresh air and accidentally got lost. Cahir was a tyrant and still has not fully corrected his sins, but he is not merciless towards women, so he will help the lost lady. Without showing any signs, the guy turns around and leaves. This is the lady's own mistake, and since she did it, she must admit it and solve it herself. The blonde looks away in surprise. She is amazed at the behavior that Kahir has shown in his new life. You can't just let the young man go, because they are destined for fate. His Highness must love the heroine at all costs. Clenching her hands angrily, the lady only thinks that all this happened because of Rosaline. She could kill the girl as soon as the opportunity presented itself. A few seconds later, the lady doesn't even have time to come to her senses, because there is a sword at her throat that is pressing on her. Several more knights surround the maiden. It was as if they had shackled the beauty in a circle from which it was impossible to get out just like that. Asking in a menacing voice what it was, the blonde frowns at the maiden, who tries to leave, saying that she did nothing. An unexpected malice appeared in my thoughts, which no one could involuntarily get rid of, even if the lady continues to deny everything. The prince's feelings could not fail him. Only because of what had happened, he was determined to see the matter through to the end. The timid girl has the aura of an evil killer, as if she has done something similar before. You could just kill her, but that won't work. Previously, the emperor would not have even thought about it, but Madam Secretary asked him not to do this. Turning to one of the servants, the young man orders Rosalind to be called from the hall as quickly as possible. The knight hastened to help, running after Rosaline, who asks in surprise what happened, since nothing was explained to her. The thing is that His Majesty drew his sword right in the garden, as if there was some good reason for this. The lady's eyes instantly widen. She really worries about the man, like no one else, without realizing it. Without listening to anything else, the lady abruptly leaves her seat to run to the scene. I couldn't believe that the man had drawn his sword. Perhaps this was an attempt to attack the king, which could have been successful. The guy will be completely fine, because the beauty promises to take care of it. She can't forget what would have happened to her if it weren't true. Continuing to run as fast as she can, the heroine promises that she will do anything for the emperor, no matter what. When the lady found out that she was in an affair, and when all the bad things happened, she did not cry, since wasting tears was a luxury. If we compare the new and past lives, then everything was fine here, so there was no reason to complain, because even love was in full abundance. Sometimes, Rosaline thinks that there are precious people next to her, ready to save at any moment. It's not the real world anyway. However, for some reason now, everything has changed. The heroine is uneasy at heart, precisely because of Kahir, with whom something could happen. I want to scream in despair, because His Majesty could be in danger or receive some more serious injuries. Finally reaching the palace garden, the lady notices a man in the distance, so she joyfully calls him by name to attract attention. The young man turns, but does not have time to say anything, precisely because he rushes forward and hugs him. Exhaling heavily, the beauty presses closer. She really couldn't bear it if something did happen. Answering the question, the man assures that he is fine, but notices traces of tears on the secretary's face. A phase is beginning that will only get worse. The hero picks up the sword from the ground, getting into position again. Turning to Rosalind, the blonde quietly asks about who made her cry so much. The girl almost never cries, because this has never happened before. But now someone has done it. He must be killed. There is no point in lying, and even Barrett herself understands this, even if she cannot say that everything happened because of the prince. Leaning even closer, the blonde once again asks who it was. He will have to find out for himself, no matter what. The topic changes because Paolo speaks up. Virgo asks what's going on because she doesn't want Ella to get hurt in any way. The virgin must be furious if her voice is hoarse, so adding fuel to the fire, the hero says that the lady was plotting to kill him. 
The lady speaks up again, screaming at the top of her lungs about how she would never dare do something like that. Turning back to the hero, the secretary quietly asks for clarification and receives the exact same answer as before, which infuriates her. Apparently, the lady had her eye on the empress's position, but having failed to get it, she decided to kill his highness. Mrs. Ella should have at least respected and appreciated his majesty, but in the end, this did not happen. It's a misunderstanding, but no one listens. No longer intending to listen to the empty sound that the maiden makes, the heroine raises her hand and gives a resounding slap in the face. Leaning closer to Ella's ear, the girl menacingly says that rubbing does not matter whether she is in charge or not. If anyone lays a finger on his majesty, she will not forgive him. Pushing Paulos, who flies to the ground, the girl clenches her teeth angrily so as not to start shouting at her. Approaching the man, the lady apologizes for the scene, saying that he can give such a punishment as will be correct by his standards. As expected from the secretary, there is no mercy for her decision to violate the emperor's safety with her presence. Today is a day dedicated to Rosaline anyway, so we can leave it at that. There will be no murder, not under any pretext. Jumping up from her seat, the blonde calls out to his majesty. The misunderstanding needs to be resolved because the beauty has decided that she wants to kill Rosalind, not Cahir. Even if the lady is the secretary's friend, even the king's patience has some limit. He's not going to listen. No longer paying attention to the maiden who remains sitting on the ground, the couple slowly leaves the royal gardens. The heroine will never give up. In the end, it will be Ella who will be next to the man and not someone else. The owners, who a little earlier had left the guests without anything for no reason, again arrived at the estate hall. The daughters of the aristocrats immediately surrounded the maiden from all sides. They start saying something without letting others finish. Smiling, the woman standing in the corner is trying to show with her appearance that you just need to behave exactly the same as before. Apologizing, the lady says that she should not have left anyone, but it was her mistake. Everything is clear, since the secretary is a busy person. The girl tries to smile so as not to arouse any suspicion. She would like this to go on forever. One of the guests comes up to say how nice it was to chat with her. In any case, it was time to go, despite the fact that they enjoyed their time here. Others say that the lady has already become a legend because of the way she handles all her work. The king, sitting at the table, looks full circle at his secretary. He is incredibly proud of what is happening. Finally, it's all over, but the lady who came to the etiquette training only says that it would be possible to arrange something like this at least once more. The woman says that she has attended many events, but this was the first one where there was such a joyful atmosphere. Usually at such tea parties there are a lot of rumors and calm, but today everyone tried their best. The girl was praised, but she is still not sure that His Majesty will allow the tea party to be held again. Leaning closer, the lady reveals the secret. Whatever the heroine asks, the emperor will fulfill everything. Such words seem scary and a little funny. In her right mind, the girl could not ask for anything she wanted. It would, of course, be possible to arrange something like this at least once more, but no one promises, even though the lady believes that this will happen. Knocking on the king's office, Rosaline hears that she has been invited inside, so she goes in and closes the doors behind her. The tea party went great, and the ladies liked the maiden, so there was no problem. Now I would like to say something different. His Majesty does not like noisy events, but the aristocrats like the desserts too much, so we can do it all at least one more time. Looking into the guy's eyes, the lady quietly asks if she has the right to host the event again. Silence means that the young man is against it. It becomes obvious that Baroness Flint was very mistaken when she said that she knew everything. Finally nodding, the man agrees. I can't believe this is true. If Barrett wants this, then of course she can do exactly as the beauty wishes. She has every right to do this. My thoughts are interrupted by another question. Rosaline never answered what was asked earlier. Not long ago, a guy asked who made the beauty cry. He doesn't even know what he did, but in the end he wants to find out. Hitting the table with his hand, the blonde once again begins to boil, asking, Is this again? To which they tell him that there was nothing special about it. The man has already explained more than once what exactly he is going to do with the person who made Rosaline cry, because it is unforgivable. The lady is not going to tell, because she cried because she was worried about the prince, so the reason is that a speck of dust got into her eye. The blonde grins. He does not have dementia, so he recognizes a lie from a mile away. When a girl lies, she bites her lip, and of course she did it again. She completely fell silent. The young man is tired, so he leaves. He will find him and still do something bad, but this will not happen, because this is the king himself. 
The aristocrats were not tired of daily conversations, so nothing moved from the starting point, because it is important who will support the emperor. Compared to the emperor, the power of the empress is very small, because this is a position to which the head of state himself appoints. If in the future the aristocrats cannot get close to Cahir, they will act through his wife, who will be weaker in spirit. His majesty needs an independent woman who will take care of everyone around her. In the original story, the kind and gentle Ella was dependent on Azella. She intrigued tirelessly, and when his majesty was in danger, she did not help and became only a burden. As a result, Cahir almost died, but all this was compensated by the love they had for each other. Because of Rosaline's appearance, the situation had changed a lot, but even the main character herself had no idea how much. If you look at it this way, then Mrs. Floria from this family was the most suitable candidate. However, during the last tea party, the maiden could not even choose dessert, not to mention political issues, so the lady raises her hand against it. The rising aristocrat asks to express his opinion and not just say what is wrong and what is wrong. For the future empress, it is not her gender that is important, but her character. It doesn't matter who she is as long as the lady becomes a wonderful ruler. The jury must pay attention to this criterion, so the lady proposes to include an independent priest from Verlos on the commission. Pashita, hearing how the conversation begins, orders everyone to be silent, asking the secretary if Anthony himself agrees. The heroine hasn't asked yet. This is all only because the opinion of Ethias's subjects is undoubtedly a priority. By using a priest from another country, the beauty not only stopped the nobles who were planning to bribe the jury, but also helped to gain the support of other nobles. The opinions of others are no longer taken into account because it is obvious that everyone agrees. For the first time, this selection will be fair. Turning to Rosalind, the Count asks if she can independently resolve the issue with the priest from Verlos. The answer remains, of course, yes. His Highness will be happy with this decision, although he himself does not know it. He is in the office, asking where Barrett is. The lady repeatedly said that she was participating in a meeting of aristocrats, and for some reason she might be delayed. The lady left only an hour ago, but why are they talking for so long that they are starting to drag Rosaline into this abyss? The man was already vigilant, but Derek seems to have become more worried lately. For some reason, the young man is constantly angry for no reason. He himself noticed that he had a similar problem. The way people look at the secretary, and the way she looks back, of course, the young man doesn't like it, no matter how he looks. He feels bad. Addressing His Highness, the secretary asks if he knows what is being discussed at the meeting, to which he receives ambiguity. We are talking about choosing a candidate for a wedding. The man did not say this, because he thought that everything was known, and that no one cared so much. Rosaline has not been able to talk about this topic almost every day for several weeks now. They still won't calm down. Things won't work out that way. Losing his temper, the blonde angrily hits the table with his hand, shouting that the selection must be completed in a week. The heroine also fell into a stupor. In a week, this is unrealistic, only if the prince does not have a secret chosen one or someone who is considered special. That is why the young man organized a tea party. Particles come together in your head, forming a picture that clarifies the situation. Now everything became clear, even to Derek. No matter what he did, he never received looks like Rosaline's and never received any praise. Five years ago, a spark ran between these two, which flared up, but no one knows whether it went out. Lighting up with joy, the beauty begins to almost jump, asking who exactly this girl is. The man doesn't know either, because he can't disclose unconfirmed information in order to save his life. His majesty is not one of those people who chooses a bride, let her do, because he literally creates problems out of thin air. Some kind of turmoil begins again in the office. A scam with land for construction was discovered. Land reform is urgently needed. Arriving just in time, the girl enters from the doorway, starting to say that the construction of the temple is also important. However, she has something else to say. The man ordered the selection of the empress to be carried out in a week, which seems absurd, because even the jury has not yet been formed. Derek told everything, but the choice of a partner is really very important, because you can't leave everything to chance. Everything is obvious, but it turns out that since the start of the selection, the three finalists have not been determined. A priest from Verlos was called for this, but the marriage is not for love, so the applicant will still not be able to advance to any of the nobles. All nobles are just pawns in the hands of the prince. He can skillfully manage the state, anticipating their every move. The empress is not a useless decoration. She should be the support of the emperor and his support in the struggle for power. 
If you choose your future wife according to this principle, His Majesty will simply have no one to rely on in difficult times. A person must have someone from whom he receives support or someone in whom he can find his happiness, so this remains a question. Rosaline can't even hold it in anymore. Tears are flowing from her eyes, which have started to flow for the second time in the last week. Virgo will definitely find a way to find a worthy person, but at the same time she still cannot stop crying, raising questions from her interlocutor. For some reason the maiden cannot stop crying, no matter how hard she tries to do so. There is no more strength left, literally at all. Turning to the girl again, the hero asks who was the one who made her cry and suffer so much. Looking into the eyes of his acquaintance, the young man promises in all seriousness that he will bring that man and lay him at the heroine's feet. The bad way is to end up doing nothing about it. But, as practice shows, it's better to do nothing at all. That's not the whole problem. Rosaline feels helpless because she doesn't know what she should do to tell her. Starting to scream, the beauty still says that it's all because of the prince. Last time it was because of him, too. The girl was worried. She was worried about what might happen, but couldn't explain it. Rosaline doesn't know the man well enough to be so worried about some kind of security that he can provide for himself. At some point, the conversation again turned in the wrong direction. The selection of the empress was too important for the girl. If this is so, then everything becomes clear. There is no point in refusing the selection, so the young man will participate. The council must be convened right now so that things can finally move forward. Now there is relief. His Majesty did not give up his own happiness. Obviously, the aristocrats are in such confusion that they themselves cannot decide how to decide on the candidate they have nominated. Everyone knows, but no one is satisfied with the only possible option that exists and has been proposed. At the moment, this is the first time in history that the emperor takes part in the selection. He came to help. The man is not going to put pressure on anyone because in any case, the final choice will always be the most important. Usually, the empress is chosen according to a scheme. First, the jury selects only three candidates for the final, then the emperor's mother, and he himself select one candidate each. If their preferences match, a new empress is born, but if not, then one becomes an empress and the other a concubine. The emperor said that he was washing his hands of it, which meant that he was leaving the last word to Azella. Everyone knows her character, so it's worth clarifying. Most likely, it means that the blonde will agree with the choice of the dowager empress, whatever it may be. This is wrong. If a man washes his hands of this, it means that, in fairness, Azella will also do the same. The last word will be given to people, not even aristocrats, so that everyone can choose their chosen one. The most important quality of a girl on the throne is trust and recognition from her subjects who believe in her. The man asks Rosaline to explain. All this means is that they will give the candidates the right to vote in the election of the empress. The only one who understands the king is the secretary, who is different from those sitting at the table. This is how elections will become independent, so no one will be able to push through their favorites. This is how everything will happen. So the daughters of aristocrats will also take part, since all girls who have reached marriageable age are obliged to do this. This means only one thing, that now it's every man for himself and nothing will work out. Kahir is a fair person, so he wants to give everyone a chance. Raising his hand, one of the dukes asks what should be done with his daughter, who is already married. Girls who are married do not participate because a man also values goodwill. He wants everything to go perfectly. Turning to Rosaline, the young man asks that her family also take part. In their family, there is only the main character herself. Virgo cannot agree to enter the bloody battlefield. She is obliged to regulate the selection process because the girl is a secretary, preferences may be exceptions, and even if it's unfair, it still doesn't matter. Leaning closer to say something, the young man evokes surprise and reaction on the faces of the aristocrats. The hero asks to play along. He doesn't want anything, but even if someone else is the empress, she would do well to learn from her. His majesty goes into the distance, closing the door behind him. Nobody knows what he was up to. Looking out the carriage window, the lady sees the excitement. Because of selection, all the girls who have found love are in a hurry to get engaged. Barrett's family is also obliged to participate, so Roy was the first to know that his sister was obliged to participate in such a selection. It is not enough for the tyrant that Rosaline works for him, so he wanted to make her his obligated wife to all this. The thought is scary, but some who have found their chosen ones no longer participate. The girl can try to do the same. There are a lot of good guys among the guy's friends. They will be able to help you meet them and chat. One of the most suitable would be a person only five years older. He's a bank clerk and also the heir to wonderful lands. 
Obviously, the brother does not like his sister's participation in such an event, so he behaves this way. The girl still came to rest. There was truth in this, so there is no point in continuing to sit at home. The guy offers to invite his friend home, but then says that they can meet tomorrow too, which suits the secretary. Tomorrow will be the very day of the attempt. Roy runs out of the room, almost humming with joy. Morning came quite quickly. The girl arrived densely, ready to the cafe where they were going to meet. The ladies are kept waiting, so somewhere in her mind she has already taken minus ten points from the score of the one who was supposed to arrive. The virgin woke up before dawn and made too many preparations, without even having breakfast, and received absolutely nothing in response. Just about to go home, the lady sighs. A man will not become sharply punctual after marriage because people usually do not change. His majesty has changed, therefore, giving two chances. The heroine waits for the guy who arrived and apologized for being late. His carriage wheel broke. The guy has a pleasant but not memorable face. He is different from the king, which, of course, is logical. The couple understands each other well, but only according to the brunette's words. He speaks only about himself. Rosaline becomes immersed in thoughts about what the prince is doing, only hearing about what is happening and her name being called. Apologizing for her absence and thoughts, the lady only hears that the guy was talking about himself. She is, of course, interested. Changing the subject, the young man asks how long the lady has been working with his majesty, saying that the man has an unpleasant character. The hero dares to insult the king, knowing that it is true, as if you are walking on thin ice. The man never shuts up, probably not even knowing what he is talking about. He doesn't care anymore. He dared to talk nonsense, asking how the heroine even endured, and she cannot listen to the reminder of her torment. Over the past five years, the country has received an impetus for development, and all because of the emperor. By exhibiting the coin, the lady pays for tea and Viscount Lines dry cleaning. At first, not understanding what it is about, the hero realizes when tea from a cup is poured onto his head. Derek wants to rest, but he's not sure if everything will be okay after yesterday's incident. Asking if everything is okay with Rosalind, the hero hears that she has an appointment at the Sunset Ray Cafe at two o'clock in the afternoon. Such an incredible thing irritates him, so, shouting, the young man asks with whom exactly, but then changes his mind. Thoughts are interrupted, because the prince notices that the servant is tired. It's worth taking a break, at least for tea. The secretary cannot believe that the gentleman is going to go to that very place, as if he did not say that he would not do this. The blonde is about to go to the place where Rosaline will be meeting. He can't admit it, but it's true. They changed clothes and went to the tea house. The man immediately rejected Derek's option because he wanted to be where Barrett was. The man doesn't look like himself. He's obviously going to keep an eye on Rosaline, even if he shouldn't. Noticing the girl, the young man talks about it, but the interlocutor asks to be quiet because they just came to drink tea. The man seems to be late, but after a while he still comes. He turned out to be quite an attractive man. Not daring to turn around for fear of being noticed, the blonde shouts that this is not true, adjusting his voice. Calming down, the hero simply listens to stories that seem endless. The boy talks about himself. Listening to the secretary's answers, the guy understands that she is bored with him. She is not interested in who is sitting right in front of her. He is pulled out of his thoughts about the beauty by a conversation that has gone somewhere in the wrong direction. The young man hears that his majesty is a tyrant. Quietly watching what is happening at the table, the couple hears that the lady is paying for tea and a suit. After this, there is tea on the head. The blonde can't hold back a light chuckle that breaks out on its own. Hearing someone's voice, the maiden turns and sees the emperor. She didn't imagine it, or it was just a dream. Turning around, the lady comes closer to the blonde man, who smiles easily. The girl tries not to call the man by name or status, in order to simply ask what he needs. Turning to the guy, the brunette tries to find out who he is, but gets nothing in response. He becomes interested in something, so once again the young man turns to Barrett. Trying to ask something, the hero switches to light flirting. The lady is so beautiful that the question flew out of my head. The hero asks to be sincere. She probably likes the tyrant she has been working for for five years very, very much. Usually the emperor asks if he hates him, but this time, for some reason, everything has changed. Line jumps forward, shouting that this is absurd. I want to shut him up so that he doesn't dig a hole for himself. The blonde man comes closer, asking if the young man works at the bank. It is already becoming clear how this will end. Turning to Derek, the hero asks to find out more about the horse's hoof bank. This definitely cannot be done because this bank is illegally distributing loans. If you close the shop now, it will turn the whole country against the emperor, even though the brunette agreed to do it. 
Trying to ask who he is, the guy falls silent because he is harshly told to shut up. He's glad to meet you, but it's still time to go. After the interlocutor quickly disappeared, the hero turns to Rosalind again, asking her to answer the question. The guy is interested in knowing, so he asks, but is afraid of the answer that she doesn't like the king at all. Turning away, the young man convinces the secretary that he is no longer interested. This is gaining new momentum. Turning again to Barrett, the gentleman asks to begin preparations for the selection and for the maiden to be even more beautiful than today. The girl is already ready, so everything is about to begin very soon, just in time. In any case, the heroine is not going to become an empress, but her character alone is enough to win. Looking around, the lady clarifies how they were going to return, because neither the guards nor the carriage are visible. About to say something else, the lady nuzzles the boy's back, almost falling to the ground. The man grabs Rosaline by the waist to prevent her from falling, but she again says that they are too close to each other. Even being completely alone, the young man is able to protect himself because he has a magic sword and is not a child. Lowering her head and drooping with her entire appearance, the beauty intends to apologize, but in the end, nothing happens. The tea room was rented. That's why there were no people in the hall, because the rent was too high. Gathering her thoughts, the maiden hurries after his majesty, realizing that he certainly cannot cope without her. Azella was almost ready to kill someone. The young man decided to choose his empress without the participation of his mother. The office door swings open with a loud sound, which once again proves the lady's spoiled mood. The Empress Dowager finally appears, but to avoid seeming rude, the hero simply asks what happened. His Majesty puts a lot of effort into choosing, so it is impossible to stay away. This is pretense. Cookies and tea are placed on the table to make the conversation go more smoothly, even in such an environment. You need to remain calm, because there were no particular problems with the choice. These are problems that are not that difficult. Virgo has heard a lot about proposed changes in the selection procedure that violate traditions. The choice must be impartial, so that no one can subsequently control the new queen. The man is clearly trying to get rid of people, the beauty, but she is not even going to let him do whatever comes to his mind. Apparently, the heroine is unbearable, since she came running herself. The competitors must choose the future empress themselves. Everything has already been decided, but the right to choose belongs to the woman, not the man, so we must not forget about the orders of Ethius. This is not true, but the young man really forgot to repeal the law, which he now continues to violate. What the Empress needed was the choice of three candidates, and the final choice was made by the elders. If the king refuses, then the lady will have to act, because aristocrats value this tradition, then everything is fine. Eventually, one of the elders will be a priest from Verlos. By trying to smile, the lady does not show her anger just because of what happened. In this case, it will be deleted. The prince is not going to go too far, but he cannot allow the queen to do the same. If it comes down to it, you can win others over to the side of truth. Derek's suggestion doesn't sound so absurd. It won't work. The decision is made within a few seconds, because the young man just needs a candidate who will be on his side. The queen doesn't even care about Antony. She could even bribe him and then finally end everything. Turning to one of the maids, Azella asks to notify Count Magnus so that he can meet with her before lunch tomorrow. All is decided. For some reason, His Majesty sent a modest telegram. There are still four days before the selection, but he called the lady now. There is still no choice, because you need to go, because the man ordered it to be done immediately. Looking into her daughter's eyes, the mother once again says that she does not want her to become empress, because she could be elected. The girl smiles, trying to soften the topic. She is just a candidate but there are many other more beautiful people in the world. There is no one sweeter and more beautiful, Miss Barrett. Everything will be fine, but only if the lady lives an ordinary life. Hugging the girl, the missus asks her not to make any effort, so as not to become an empress and not lose this path. The lady has been sitting in her estate for many hours in complete silence, surrounded by several maids. Unable to stand it any longer, the lady gets up and asks about the count. They tell her that Magnus left yesterday, so this is not the best answer. Already raising their hand, the lady is stopped. The count finally arrived, which saved the maids once again. Smiling, the lady asks to be taken to the living room. She will arrive very soon, as soon as he passes into the estate. Entering the office, the heroine smiles so that all her insides clench. They haven't seen each other for a long time, so there's a lot to talk about. Taking a sip of tea, Azella asks about Garrison, who should have already graduated from the academy. This is to keep the conversation going. Magnus immediately understands where this conversation is leading. Surely the lady will offer to arrange her son's fate, 
But for what price? Thanks to the queen's efforts, the boy is doing well. She's always happy to help, although this is not entirely selfless and not entirely true. Bowing his head, the brunette promises that he will do everything that is needed, if only the heroine needs help. The guy's words are like a balm for the soul, but we are talking about selection. This is the speech that is needed. Derek reported almost immediately what was happening. The empress met with Count Magnus. The young man thought that he was sitting in his lands and keeping a low profile, but as it turned out, this was not entirely true. Recently, the man returned to the capital. As it turned out, this happened in order to make the necessary acquaintances for my son. Everything falls into place. The woman met with the right people to influence the selection of the empress. Derek understands perfectly. No matter how much the palace wants to do everything honestly, the lady needs her own people who will guide her back to power. Remembering Ella, the young man understands that even meeting her was definitely somehow connected with all this. The report on Mrs. Paulos was already ready, but lately Derek has been too busy with Rosalind. The girl's place is still empty. Looking at how the man thought, looking at the secretary's place, the brunette sighs, because this has been going on for several days. This is not the first time His Majesty has completely withdrawn into himself like this. He misses the one who went home. By forcing Derek to report now, the Emperor prepares to listen to everything that will be said. After the secretary arrived back at the castle, she was almost immediately met by Rui, who came running. Looking at her friend, the lady clarifies what happened. His Majesty summoned the beauty to the palace by urgent telegram. Obviously, the girl doesn't know, so she assumes that someone was expelled or that new problems were simply added to them. The owner of the bank also becomes the agenda, and this is true because he is in prison, but that is not why the maiden was called. The Empress Dowager changed the protocol for selecting a girl wife, but at this point, the hero interrupts Rui, promising that he will tell the rest himself. Sitting down in a curtsy, the maiden asks for forgiveness for arriving so late. She's there. Clearing his throat a little so as not to be overwhelmed by the lady's beauty, the guy says that the greeting has been accepted. Listening to the following orders, the maiden only hears that she is asked to win by any means and become an empress. This is no longer a joke. Kahira needs the lady very much, and therefore she will become a trusted person. All the power that others dream of will belong to the girl. The cream of society will also be at the heroine's feet. Rosalind will be able to live in prosperity and near the king, who himself, it seems, does not understand what he is telling his own secretary. Noticing strange emotions of sadness, the blonde tries to understand what is happening. Perhaps she doesn't like it, so she's trying to get something else. If you think about it like that, then according to Derek, he is obliged to give Rui the best offer, which indicates his importance. Realizing what the matter is, Kahir asks if there was such a reaction because he did not propose to her. Asking not to worry, the hero promises that he will gather his strength and make the most luxurious proposal of her life. There is no understanding of why something like this is suddenly being offered. He is in a good mood. As it turned out, it was all because of Azella. They cannot sit back and let a woman's man take power. The young man's wife should be someone he trusts. Rosalind has been around for five years now, so he has had time to assess her abilities. If it is Barrett, then there will be no problems. The hero does not want to let go of such a talented and valuable person. Kahir says that a lady is fit to be an empress even if there is no other way. Even Derek noticed that it was ambiguous. The situation is pressing, but the king is too persistent. First, the emperor hired the beauty as a secretary, and now he wants to do it as an empress. Walking out the door to the maiden, the maids, who knew that his majesty was a monogamous man, almost immediately cling to her. The man continued to insist that he would not marry, and all this was because of Mrs. Berit. One of the maids told the others what the prince personally said when he plundered in his office. Everything became clear. The hero fell in love with Rosalind at first sight and watched her. Most likely, these were just nice rumors to influence everyone else. Trying to get behind the wave that literally covered the girl, she simply backs away to leave. Even if the emperor wants to stop the empress dowager as quickly as possible, this does not mean that such methods should be resorted to. It was possible to arrive at the castle only at night, so Ella greets Azella as she passes and takes off her hood. Magnus takes off his hood next. He too arrived at the castle to discuss the future strategy being used. Grinning, the woman points to the sofas opposite hers. She's starting to get tired of what's going on, so she wants to win. The heroine asks for forgiveness for all the chaos, even though Paolo says that it is incredibly beautiful here, which is a lie. Looking into the girl's eyes, the woman asks if it is true that Kahir still excites her heart, knowing the answer very well. Love gives terrible power. This girl is smart and naive, 
and that time at the ball she did not show any excitement and looked collected, which proved something. Even if the girl just followed all the instructions, she is still a smart child who can turn into something good. Looking at Ella once again, the lady just says how much she likes her. She can help the king. Lowering her head, the blonde talks about the honor that belongs to her if she helps. Everything will be in the best possible way. One way or another, the empress is Ella, not Rosalind, who has no right to think so. They entered the world together, but only one will become the main one. Arriving at the castle, the maiden immediately opens the door to her room in genuine rage. The lady orders all the flowers to be left outside so that they do not disturb her because there is no more space left. Absolutely nothing can fit into the large room, especially since the heroine begins to get a headache from such a sweet smell. Sitting down on the sofa, the girl exhales. Obviously, the young man decided to shower her with gifts, thus showing his serious intentions. Even if this is so, the heroine cannot possibly be joyful. Sadness takes over the mind, as if something is still wrong. Virgo understands that His Majesty needs him like no one else, but then she will have to forget about her personal life. The wonderful future she dreamed of will not happen. A person is the architect of her own happiness, so it doesn't matter how good the offer is if she doesn't want it. The prince can't do anything. While discussing the proposal plan, the young man is interrupted. This is Rosaline, who asks for some time to talk a little. The guy's mood rose sharply. Even Derek noticed that this was all just because Madam Secretary came. Waving his hand to the side, the blonde promises that they will discuss everything else a little later, but he doesn't know when exactly. From the threshold, asking if the girl liked the gifts, the hero receives a positive answer, but in fact she begins to hate them. It seems that the young man quickly read his thoughts, because he immediately says that he cannot take back his words, so he is going to make her back the empress. There is no truth in the legs, so the blonde offers to sit down. Since she came, it means everything needs to be discussed. The neck is already stiff, looking up at the lady, so this is another argument why you should sit on the sofa. For some reason, the girl began to notice that no matter whether a man deceives her or not, she undoubtedly weakens in front of him. Rumors were already circulating. This was done in order to maintain the legend, but the lady still asks what and how. The hero showered us with gifts even before the selection began. The heart already belongs to Rosaline, so other girls will not go out of their way and will simply give in out of respect. Still, deciding to speak, the lady firmly announces that she does not possess the qualities of an empress. The order must be reconsidered. Immediately lowering her head, the beauty expects a wave of anger that can fall on her quite easily. The heroine has all the qualities. Most likely, she simply hates the emperor, even if she tries to say that she does not. If this is not hatred, then the girl can take the place she promised. Everything can be done in the right way. Kahir can make people stop hating him. It won't be difficult because the plan has already been drawn up. The man simply asked, not ordered. At first thinking that this was just a way to defeat Azella, the young man was incredibly mistaken. For some reason, when it comes to Barrett, the blonde becomes so greedy, as if she already belongs only to him. Without giving time to think, the hero again turns to the secretary, asking to listen to everything he has to say. Approaching the sofa, the blonde gets down on one knee, looking intently into the girl's eyes. He knows what to do. Without saying anything else, the handsome man first takes out a velvet box and opens it, revealing a beautiful ring. The girl almost backs away out of surprise. Rosaline must become his empress no matter what. Not fully believing and realizing what is happening, the lady tries to say something, but all attempts are in vain. Obviously, the stepmother's opposition is quite important, since it was a request on her knees and not an order like a boss. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This marriage is only to show the imperial power as best as possible. The man asks if he can get up, thereby interrupting his thoughts. Nodding, the lady helps him up. Now, when the young man finds himself on the same level as the maiden, he demands a logical answer. She should marry him. Looking at the box with the ring, the lady understands only one thing. It is necessary to change His Majesty's decision by all means. Trying to make arguments, the lady remembers her family of minor viscounts. They will not be able to provide adequate support to the state. The empress does not need education. This, on the contrary, will be an obstacle to establishing order in the state. The last argument is that the man recognized Rosaline as someone he doesn't like. This was said only because of her beauty, because there was no moment of hatred. The empress has calmed down, but this does not mean that Rosalind will not be chosen. You need to agree as quickly as possible, even based on marriageable age. Moving the box forward again, 
the hero only says that such reasons are not the basis for the refusal that she shows. Becoming weak, the lady gathers her remaining willpower. For the heroine, it is important to date, then get married and live happily and beautifully. Sharply agreeing to this in order to start with something like this, the maiden freezes. She understands that then she needs to choose an empress starting tomorrow. Not immediately understanding what they are talking about, the hero simply says that it was about their relationship and not someone else. Either way, it's worth a try. The girl's face turns red. It's obvious they're making fun of her, but it makes her feel uncomfortable. This would never happen. A man is devoted to his beloved, so he intends to do everything in the best possible way. Ella was a fatal love, even in the original, but Rosaline remained just an inconspicuous secretary. The lady still cannot believe the sincerity of the proposal. There is too much pressure on her that it already seems unbearable. Turning to the lady to encourage him, the hero asks her to teach him everything so that he too can do everything well, even in love. This is impossible because even Barrett herself has never been in a relationship. They will learn everything together, from scratch. The heroine herself does not notice how she is again involved in this loop of strange events. The ring seems to beckon, asking you to put it on your finger. There were definitely no more reasons to refuse. At such moments, one should not allow the situation to drag him into the abyss, but that is exactly what happened. Rosaline seems incredibly upset, because you can see it even on her face. The man acted too smugly. He did the wrong thing, but the reactions make the beauty doubt whether this is exactly his majesty whom she knows. Since the girl has already decided to agree, the blonde asks permission to put a ring on her finger. A nod becomes the next answer to all questions. When it ends up on your hand, it shines a little as if it were in its rightful place. It still doesn't seem right. There's nothing more to say, but the lady tries to say something anyway. The hero kisses his hand, asking him to take care of him. He will do anything, but now even the heroine herself doesn't know what to do with all this. Derek is finishing his preparations. All that is left for the proposal are fireworks, and then you can start doing everything according to plan, as the prince wanted. No longer looking interested, the blonde begins to read the papers, saying that he already proposed a little earlier. It just happened when Rosaline came into the office to talk. All the work went down the drain. The man prepared a perfect plan for a marriage proposal that will remain in the history of Ethius. But now, there is no point in it. Before the heroine sees all this, the emperor orders everything to be removed from sight, so as not to spoil any expectations or mood. Even fireworks will have to be removed, too. Now what they were going to do is not the most important thing, because they need to make new plans. Sitting in her room before going to bed, the girl examines the ring. She received it while she was confused, and now she must fulfill her duty. The virgin did not have to allow this, and had to dryly refuse until the very end. In the end, she simply failed with everything she could. After something like this, you need to clear your mind, so the beauty gets up from her seat and goes to the window. Opening the doors, she looks somewhere into the distance. Of course, the lady did not expect great love in the future with her husband, whoever he was, but political marriage is on a completely different level. Even the moon seems similar to Kaisar, which only infuriates him even more, making him regret the way things are. Rui knocks on the door, and the heroine lets her in almost immediately. She had a lot of work to do, so she didn't bother to see Rosaline today. The girl arrived for just a minute. She just has something to give to the girl, and it turns out to be some strange smelling ball. Inside the thing were herbs that should help you sleep. If you inhale them, you can relax and sleep well even if you can't. Joy is almost instantly visible on the girl's face. She is happy that everything turned out this way. The maid came only for this, but in fact, it was the emperor who asked to convey this. He wishes the maiden to have a good night's sleep before the election of the empress, which is scheduled for tomorrow. Looking at the confusion on the girl's face, Rui comes to the conclusion that she still doesn't understand anything, trying to sort out her own feelings. The girl makes cute eyes trying to ask to be told everything, so the maid gives in. According to her, His Highness is quite serious. The lady knows everything herself, so she interrupts the tirade before it can begin. She understands the prince's intentions, whatever they may be. The man even gave me a ring. His Majesty does not want to seat next to him the man of the living stepmother of the Empress, who could manage the state through him. This is not what Rui wanted to say. The secretary is very good at work, but too stupid in love. The brunette understands that she needs to be taught everything. Inviting the lady to go back to bed, the lady promises that she will sleep well. She will always do a great job, no matter how it may turn out. While in bed, 
the beauty watches in her mind as the ship with her dreams slowly leaves the harbor and sails off into the distance. A brilliant idea comes to mind. Divorce is also an option that they have no right to exclude, no matter how difficult it may be, and no matter how much its impact. For some reason, the beauty didn't think about it at all. The Empire has long allowed divorce by agreement, which of course can work. The situation cannot be delayed. First, the couple would marry and reduce Azella's power. And then, after everything had calmed down, they could divorce as if nothing had happened. It's worth thinking of this as a simple job change. The secretary will become the empress, and after completing the task, she will receive her cherished simple life. Rejoicing at her intelligence and such a wonderful outcome, the lady falls on the bed, smiling blissfully, because now she doesn't need to worry so much. After the beauty has thought productively, she can finally sleep and figure out what she will do and how to win tomorrow. All preparations began in the morning to get to the first stage of the elections. The girl got up too early to do everything, but she understood that this would all benefit her. I still can't believe that the cherished day has finally arrived. Before starting the whole operation, the lady decides to make sure of her guesses. Turning to Rui, she asks if she can see the prince before starting. You will need to choose a gem, and then you may be able to meet His Majesty. We are talking about an important event. Several servants arrive in the room holding boxes. His Majesty sent them all to do their job as best as possible. Opening the lid, the lady sees many beautiful decorations that shine even without the sun falling on them. Last night, the Emperor and Derek arrived at the castle where they were heading from the very beginning, with Edvik, whom they had not seen for quite some time. The man asks for forgiveness, but also asks to notify him about such an unplanned visit next time, because it's a little scary. Letting the couple inside, the guy only steps aside, giving up this right so that they can finally find themselves in the shop. Stopping near one of the stands, His Majesty examines many different decorations, which seem to hint at how they will look on Rosalind. Pointing to a few others, the young man asks to pack them all. I can't believe he didn't just pick a few pieces of jewelry to choose from. Asking who is the special person who will receive all the gifts, the young man only answers that it will be his empress. They have a different relationship with her. The elections haven't even started yet, but Edvik's information is outdated. Everything was decided a long time ago, because the man has a chosen one. Of course, it will be Mrs. Rosalind, but so that he is not too surprised, the blonde hurries him, asking him to quickly pass. Knocking on the office, the ladies open the door, sitting down in a curtsy, greeting the son of the empire. She looks even more wonderful than ever before. The virgin stands up and looks at the man, who looks quite pleased with his work. There is a pendant on the neck. After all, ladies like simple things. So it was not in vain that the prince ran to the jewelry store last night. He chose this pendant himself, so it's doubly nice. The girl immediately understands that the king himself is looking at her, but it was his gaze that stopped at her neck. Lately, the man has been too generous with compliments. She is busy, but still came in the morning. Virgo didn't get bored because she wanted to talk about something important. Calling Derek out the door, the man stands up. His majesty said that the lady must definitely become an empress. She is not going to deny or refuse a position that she may receive, but this also matters. This role is very important, which is why only Rosalind is suitable for it, who deserves it more than anyone else. No one else is needed. Even the hero's voice drops after what has been said, showing his true intentions. The guy is only concerned about the political side of the issue, but coming from the other side, the lady asks if they will do for her what she asks. Smiling, the blonde promises that he will do anything to please his chosen one. The virgin promises once again that she will become an empress and will do everything in her power. She will help the state. The heroine still has one condition. The hero is a spouse who will fulfill any request, even an insignificant one, and therefore agrees to listen to everything. After the authorities stop raising questions, Rosalind persistently asks for a divorce. This is the condition. The words hit your head like a stone. The guy cannot believe that he heard exactly this, not wanting to perform anything so as not to interfere. Going out into the street, the lady tries to squeeze through the other girls who are crowded together. The fireworks in the sky looked amazing. It was the first time Rosaline had seen such beautiful fireworks on such a clear day, when it was not yet evening outside for the full atmosphere. His Majesty greets the assembled ladies with all his heart. This is not only for them, but Barrett did not understand this statement. Stopping talking, the maiden turns and continues to look at the sky, in which clear lights sparkle. The elections for the Empress have begun, in which you need to try. The knights are only glad that everything happened on time and they survived. 
the hero leans back in his chair. He can't believe that he was asked for a divorce, because he can't imagine anyone else next to him. Derek interrupts all thoughts, saying that, as requested, the observers have arrived. There is no time left for reflection, but Kahir understands perfectly well that there will be no divorce, because Rosalind will go down in history as an ideal ruler. The selection must prove everything, because with a careful comparison with other ladies, the heroine will be recognized by people. For an emperor, only a maiden whom he has liked for a long time can become an empress. There will be no other thoughts on this matter. The role in selection is very important. Even if newcomers do not find free time, it is still important. Asking to see the exam questions, the man holds out his hand to read each of the sheets that are offered to him. This kind of thing is completely unacceptable. In this way, it is impossible to assess the knowledge of the empress because it looks more like fables. The young man desires a girl of a higher level. It must match it, so the questions will be changed. Pulling out a sheet of paper from the table, the guy hands it over, saying that the questions should be exactly like this. There is silence in the hall. Quite a lot of girls have gathered, but they are all in anticipation, so they can't say anything. Nobody knows what the questions will be. No one gave information in advance, even if it would have helped quite a lot. If you look at it this way, all the ladies studied with different teachers for preparation, so most likely many will cope. To begin with, we would like to welcome and thank all the ladies. Now they are here, and everyone is happy about this event. The first question becomes the topic, the most exciting social issue of the empire at the moment. Such a question about the present state of the empire could not be singled out for the ladies, who are quite far from it. This is too much, but the assignments are still collected because no one asks the girls for their opinions. The next topic to write about is the location in the capital for the construction of a temple. This is too good a question for Rosalie, and time is ticking. Turning her head after everything is over, the lady notices Ella, who is closely watching the beauty. Paulos looks too calm, but they also knew about her. Derek said earlier that Ella was taken away from Azella. The exam was over. Moving on to the evaluation, the young man asks to evaluate the work of other participants so that everything is correct. After this, participation in the selection will continue. The girl meets Ella's eyes. Aristocrats reading other letters talk among themselves to collect their thoughts and choose the best job. It really becomes difficult to choose. First of all, they praise Mrs. Rosalind, who did her best. The girl smiles. She sincerely thanks you for such kind words towards her and her work. Miss Ella's answer is also good. In the original story, she chose a different place, but this also turned out to be correct. Most vote for Rosaline, which irritates the blonde, who is sitting very close by, watching the events unfold. The ladies are ready to listen to the results. The man comes forward and takes out an envelope with everything written on it. The questions were really difficult, and even Barrett did not expect that they would do something like this. This is the selection of the Empress, which is why the level is so high. But no one suspected that those who failed immediately left the palace. It's a shame, because the families invested a lot of money into this participation. Trying to cheer everyone up, the lady says that it is a great blessing that such ladies are with them. It seems His Majesty has a hand in everything from the exam to the removal of contestants, but now it's up to Rosaline to deal with everything. Virgo is personally thanked for the work she wrote. The answers were correct, and the writing itself was excellent. The lady's work was truly amazing. The solution was great, so it will work out. The Virgin is tired, so she goes into another room, but Ella pushes her right in front of her. If she wanted to talk, she had to do it with words. Paolo seems to have an important conversation, but even if she does, she may come to her table at dinner. This can happen, but the heroine is not even sure that she will have time. By evening, everything was finished. Rui suggested that everyone go to specially designated rooms. They can see each other later, but for now, Rosaline asks where her chambers are, as if it matters. Smiling, the brunette offers to follow her. She knows where each of the finalists lives. The original story has changed a lot. Even if Ella continues to revolve around a man, she is still not the main character. Many questions still remain. The lady does not understand who the guy is truly in love with and who will become his main companion. Opening the door, the lady steps inside and almost immediately freezes. It is located in a beautiful room, namely in the chambers of the Empress. The first ever selection for Empress Aetius promises to last only a week. Such an open method of elections has never been carried out before. No one had the right to choose, because it was left to the elders. First, an exam was conducted on knowledge of politics, economics and sociology with culture in order to comprehensively evaluate the education of aristocrats. After all this, it was time for results. 
After the selection, there were only 20 ladies left in the castle who did not fail. Now they promised to have a dinner party, a declaration, and finally, a dance. This way, everything will be appreciated. Officials, elders, and the contestants themselves will select the top three maidens for this title. Then a jury consisting of the highest aristocrats and the priest Verlos will choose an empress from among them who will be confirmed. The socialites of Ethius were invited to judge. They were also present at the event, like everyone else. They will evaluate etiquette and also personal qualities. Of course, this is also quite important, which even Rosaline understands. Turning around, the first thing the lady notices is the right hand of Azella, the wife of Baron Varios, Emilia Varios. With a rating that becomes good, you can spin. So without worrying, the lady just starts eating. The missus angrily says that she seemed too pleased when she tried the food. It just tasted too good to her. Before her debut in royal society, the heroine worked in the palace, so she still makes mistakes sometimes. She didn't want to cause any inconvenience. It was polite because even if Amelia was in a bad mood, she apologized. One could understand, but the empress made it clear what needed to be done. Scooping a little of the food into the spoon, the lady also tastes it, and then covers her mouth with her hand in surprise because of the taste. It was a wonderful taste, but even so, the baroness herself made such a ridiculous mistake. If the chef finds out that the aristocrat was so amazed by the taste, he will probably be in seventh heaven. This is the highest praise. Amelia involuntarily notices that the young lady is turning her attention away from the mistake. It's a slick way of dialogue that feels like ladies with 20 years of experience. Doubt still creeps into the mind. Rosaline may behave in ways that will help her get good points. Asking what is currently popular in social circles, the lady immediately receives an answer from one brunette. We are talking about a product for hands to make them whiter and more beautiful. Looking at her hands, the heroine sighs. She has absolutely no time to look after herself because there is too much work. Getting involved in the conversation, the Baroness reminds that every self-respecting lady should watch her hands. In a fit of her feelings, the brunette does not notice how she throws the fork off the table, only seeing the servant who promises to bring a new one. Drawing attention, Barrett assures that it was her fork, and of course, it was also her mistake. They will bring her a new one, but in the meantime, the heroine apologizes for the fact that she probably brought a lot of inconvenience. This was not a help, because, according to Rosalind, there's still a lot to learn and etiquette to learn. The Baroness is known for her manners, so the lady asks for some lessons. Freezing, the interlocutor cannot find the right words, only nodding to express her agreement. Before leaving the hall, Amelia, taking Barrett's hands in hers, says that they are also beautiful. This means a lot. The hands of a hard worker deserve even more compliments than anyone else, because they do everything for it. Smiling and showing sincerity, the heroine once again thanks for such compliments that warm her soul. Sitting in the room, the lady cannot understand whether her opinion about the Baroness was true or not. She thought that she was hated, but it turned out that this was not the case. After all the procedures done and a hard day, the woman happily falls on a soft bed in anticipation of relaxation. The only question that remains is who could have placed the beauty in the Empress's room. The one who could do this is His Highness. Saying this out loud, the lady hears the man's voice and jumps out of bed. Blinking her eyes in surprise, the heroine looks at the guy sitting on the windowsill. A smile itself shows on the face. I can't believe that the beauty was waiting for the prince even after everything she said. Almost screaming in horror, the girl remembers that she is on the fifth floor. It's impossible to enter the door at this hour, so, of course, Kahir climbed up the rope that was now hanging outside the window. 